Welcome everyone to the Oz Fortress Season 23 Premier Grand Final between Jasmine T and Xenophobia Phobia. I am Peter, we have v of Production, and joining me is Yauch. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, mate, and I'm glad you did that intro because you pronounce way its name way better than I ever could with my silly accent. But no, I'm keen to be here. It's my first cast in a very long while. Uh, we got a bit of drama in the server before the match <laughs> has started, though. So uh, we haven't done map picks either. We've got a little bit to cover before this game gets started as well, Peter. So. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff to talk about, but uh, let's start with the the elephant or the missing dog in the room, which is that Doge is apparently asleep. So, so, so what happened there? Why, why is he sleeping? All right. From what I understand, uh, Doge, Vana, Lex, and Paulson all stayed up until 10 a.m. this morning playing Rust, I believe it was. Uh, so... Yeah, Paulson and Vana are in the server. They've managed to wake up because they've got months and enough sleep schedules where they can manage that. Doge is nowhere to be seen. Uh, they're trying to contact him, but waiting in the wings is Redcoat on uh, Zeno's ro uh, roster if they can't get Doge. But uh, that will really throw a spanner in their works with this. Uh, Paulson has also come out and said, my plan has worked, so maybe this was deliberate sabotage. Just evil genius Paulson. Just <laughs> absolutely playing rings around everyone. It's not just TF2. It's like everything. It's sleep scheduling. It's everything. Every Nothing doesn't matter here. Oh, exactly. All right. It's all on the line. <laughs> There's some serious business right here. But uh, yeah, let's actually talk about the rosters uh, of Xenophobia Phobia. Uh, if you could go through that and uh, you know maybe tell us about who the potential uh, backup could be. All right, well, we'll start with the core roster. We've got Aishao on the Pocket Scout, the Singaporean Super Scout, a uh, very, very solid addition to that team. Uh, Sam on the Flank Scout. Sam has been around um, Odds Fortress for absolutely ages, an extreme beast on Scout and Sniper, extremely good aimer. Pauses on the Roma. Uh, again, another very solid player, possibly the friendliest dude you'll ever meet as well. Varna is on the Pocket, replacing Tay this season, who was their Pocket last season, in the season where they got third in a very close match. Uh, the demo man, as we were saying earlier, is still yet to be decided, and Sean is the medic and the main caller for this team. So Redcoat uh, is on the roster. I imagine that he will be the one that they have lined up if they do need to replace Doge. He is, uh, obviously, he's won Prem before. On come, He came second last season on the Pencil Case, I think that team was called. That team changed names a lot. Uh, really, really solid demo man. Uh, probably if you were going to take him and Doge and just sort of like weigh them up. One in, one for one in terms of mechanics maybe. Maybe Doge has the slight edge there, but at the end of the day, it's more of a synergy thing, you know, Beta? So obviously they want to be playing with the core roster if possible. Yeah, you're always going to make small little weird mistakes whenever you play with uh, someone that it's, it's not on your roster. It uh, really sorry just doesn't to matter, cut you right? off, but Redcoat has just joined the server. So there you go. Yep. So that will be that. Um, the, the roster, uh, before we go into the big bands of Jasmine T, will of course be Cookie on Pocket Scout, Elmo on the Flank Scout, aka Nine Year Old Frog. And then we have Geo on Pocket. Like, this is people I remember from like lands and stuff, so these guys are all extremely good. And then we have Hertz on Roamer, we have Paulson on Demo Man, and then we have Dave on Medic. So that is a, a very recognizable Jasmine T roster, even for a filthy foreigner like myself. Uh, this looks extremely impressive. So I, very interesting. I think the last time I saw Jasmine T play, that was like the season before, where they were kind of off-classing and, and had some more people on it. So it should be interesting to see how they were able to, to bounce back here. But uh, so should we talk about uh, some, some map picks and bands here? As we can see, they have actually started. Uh, yep, I haven't got the thing up. Oh, yes, actually, I do now. Uh, so it uh, Jasmine, Jasmine being the higher seed here, they do get the uh, pick and ban advantage. They in that they get to go first. This is going to be a best of five, so we're going to see Jasmine uh, banning one map and picking three, while uh, Zeno are going to be banning one map and then picking the two in between them. So we've started it up here as I am going to uh, have a look. Uh, Sean has banned Process, which makes me think that uh, Paul uh, that Paulson has deferred for Zeno. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if they do either, but that's not unexpected as it was a map that they played in the 
What was that? Sorry, weird. Oh, okay. Paulson. All right. So we're we're a little bit behind the players at the moment. Uh, Paulson has come straight out of the gates, banning product, which is a map that Zeno are always very strong on. They have extremely DM heavy scouts, but without red coat, uh, with red coat rather, and without Doge, it would definitely hurt their ability to succeed on that map. So that's probably a pre-planned ban there from Jasmine. And Sean has followed up and banned Process, which is a map that they got thoroughly stomped on by Jasmine in the, I believe it was the lower final. Are you casting that game, Beto? Yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. I'm, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, where, so we're going to keep on going with that. Uh, we'll start seeing the picks momentarily. Uh, I am curious, though, Beta, uh, you said you're familiar, even as a foreigner, with the Jasmine roster. Who, what players are you going to be looking out for as maybe sort of someone who's less involved with the scene? I want to know who you're looking at. Um, well, just out of curiosity, I'm definitely going to be looking out for Hertz because I don't really know anything about him. And, like, Roma it can be pretty significant. Like, if you just have a Roma that just constantly losing fights on the flank, and, uh, you know, there are some really good scouts that they can just absolutely just beast on him and just take him out with ease. So that could be a, a huge issue, right? So, so that's definitely something I'm looking forward to. And just also, like, I want to see how good he is. And, you know, maybe I'll find out. But uh, I, I think... If we're just talking about uh, Jasmine D, I, I'd say also just look at Paulson, right? That's always fun to watch. Just hit everything. Just yeah. do some damage. Uh, Paulson, uh, yeah, obviously just a total beast on the Demo Man class. And it's interesting, this is the first time that we have seen Geo back on Pocket for a very long time in Oz Fortress as well. He made the uh, inevitable switch that all Pocket mains seem to make at some point to the Pocket Scout class. And he was he was very, very good at it. I don't think it's much of a stretch to say he was the best Pocket Scout in Oz Fortress while he was doing it. Probably the best we've seen since Yuki, honestly. So uh, he's back on the Pocket roll now with uh, Cookie being the new acquisition on the Pocket Scout role. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the... To sort of build on what you said about the flank, about the Roma, I'm looking forward to seeing the flank scouts go at it as well. Uh, that is Sam and Elmo, both famously good aimers in the Oz Fortress team, ex-teammates, good friends, and they're definitely going to be wanting to one-up each other in this matchup here as I believe... We're just waiting on more picks and bans while people argue about their aliases. Love this. <laughs> oh, so product and process both got uh, banned. And, like, those are both maps that are pretty good for Sniper. And I don't know, we haven't really talked about this so far, but as far as my initial impression was that uh, Sam is the best Sniper of all of them, but maybe Cookie... Also, is pretty good. Is that somewhat correct? I think that you could say it's it's very touch and go. It just depends who's on on their day. Sam is probably the most famous for his sniping ability, but I'd say just given the way that the wind happens to be blowing, Hertz and Geo and uh, probably Elmo and Cookie could all snipe as well. Uh, I'd say Sam's definitely the best one that they have on Xeno, but... Uh, he's probably, yet yeah, best by a fair way, but uh, Jasmine are really, really, they have spoilt for choice as far as the off-classes go. It's another thing to say, you um, you said you're not super familiar with Hertz. He's played in the Premier Division as just about every combat class imaginable, and he's very versatile, but one thing he does like to do is bust out the spy every now and then, so I expect to see some off-class shenanigans from him as well at some point. So that'll be one to look out for. Yeah, and we have another pick. So Jasmine T, they pick Logjam. And hey, this shout is out to pretty... Heisen Chat, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, so Logjam, uh, I'm pretty excited about this because I haven't seen Logjam played uh, since Season 22 or something in ETF and we're on Season 31, so it's been a while. And I'm pretty sure the map has changed quite a bit. So, so what, what is Logjam like these days? Uh, Logjam's an interesting one. Obviously, the most distinct thing about Logjam, I'd say, was that it, it has a spire. And, I don't know, 
Badlands seems to have fallen out of favor recently, but it used to be conventional knowledge in TF2 that any map that had a spire was automatically better just for having a spire on it. So that's a cool mm-hmm. thing that Logjam has. Um, it's it plays very very differently. The um, mid to second chokes aren't really like any of the maps that exist in the pool at the moment. I'd say, especially since we in Oz Fortress we have a bit of just two map syndrome when it comes to uh, pugs. It's just process or snake water, maybe some gully wash thrown in. So it plays very differently, and I think a lot of teams have had uh, a bit of trouble adjusting to how to. Like, or just wrapping their heads around the best way to transition from mid to second here. Uh, it's also something I, uh, you guys did play it significantly, like way back when in ETF to World Beater. So you probably know the callouts better than me. None of us ever actually knew the callouts on my team. We just called it choke and room and other room and stuff like that. So you're probably going to do a better job of it than me. Uh, maybe, but I have forgotten most of it. I, the first thing I notice is that. Uh, like all the entrances have somewhat changed. I'd say the the choke area is still pretty much the same. It, it's very narrow and it's very easy to get spammed out if you want to run through it. There's this really steep slope in it, and then they have the spire and just the general area in front of it. So as soon as you start running down the the ramp, all the rockets will hit you, and there's nothing you can do about it because it's so narrow. So it's very difficult to actually make a proper push through the middle, like going either direction really. So like that means that you have to go through either. You know, the house area, and that seems to have opened up and narrow, and at the same time made a lot more simple. So that actually looks like a slightly worse. No, it's slightly better, I'd say. And then otherwise, you can go all the way through the flank area and maybe try and make it work that way. But that's pretty much only from second into middle that that can work, and you usually have to catch them by surprise in order to get through there because it's a pretty small doorway. So. Yeah, from what said, I remember. Though, yeah, sorry to cut you off there, but uh, that said, coming through that doorway, I've found, uh, especially in this map, it puts you right behind that hut on middle, which means that you don't necessarily have a great sight line. It's it's a very touch and go thing. If you can get in totally unseen and totally clean, then you can get really really good ground, especially coming across into the sort of lobby type area of the other team. But if they are on high ground there, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble trying to make your way through that door. Uh, we do have some more map picks coming in. Uh, Zeno's first pick, the sep- second map we'll see in this best of five, is Gully Wash, with Prolands coming in as the third map, Jasmine's second pick. So that, uh, assuming one team rolls the other, uh, those are the three maps we'll be seeing, with the tiebreaker uh, maps to be picked yet. Yeah, this is, of course, a best of five. This is the finals, so we're going all out with the... Using basically all of the maps in, in the map pool here. So, uh, Logjam, Gollywas, and Prolands. Uh, I'd say Gollywas and Badlands are. Well, Gollywas is definitely a big standard map, you know, and Process is the other one that's uh, been banned. So, Snakewater is pretty likely to be picked here. Um, what, what, uh, is Granary in the map pool? Uh, Granary uh, is not in the nap- map pool. It got replaced by Logjam. I was not happy about that personally, but yeah. <laughs> no, so. Uh, I'm trying to rake my brain, so we'll have Snake Water and um, that other one is the decider. <laughs> I've totally blanked on it. Yeah, I can't remember what the other map is either. Oh, well, we'll probably find out. <laughs> yeah. Or well, someone right. will point out to us in Twitch chat, and then four people will all say it at the same time and we'll look like idiots. Sunshine, thank you. Yeah, Sunshine. Don't worry, we'll end up looking like idiots no matter what we do, I think. Oh, yeah. It's just no biggie there. But they. Uh, Let's talk about Prolands a little bit, just because that is the new version of it. It used to be that Badlands, back in the very old days, had a super quick cap time. A lot of people complained, so they changed the cap time to like from one second to two seconds. And then, after a whole lot of uh, people started hating Badlands, and it just kind of ended up with everyone being stuck on last all the time, they changed uh, it back in Badlands Pro to having the one second cap time again. And unfortunately, there's no such thing as a half-second cap time. So it's either one second or two seconds. So you can't have a nice middle ground. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So now it's just a super fast cap time once again, which just opens up for so many shenanigans and cheese strategies and back caps. And it's uh, it's very, very brutal. You're definitely up against it, which you get pushed all the way back to last. So winning mid is incredibly important these days. So definitely keep that in mind. 
But, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I still prefer this to being stuck on last all the time. I... It's an interesting one. Uh, I think you and I both played uh, back when Badlands was did have the extremely the default. It had all the weird clipping beta and it had the super fast cap time originally. And everyone used to be, it was the way that you played that last. You had to be hyper vigilant and watching all the doors. But I think that uh, the change that Valve made to the map made everyone a little bit complacent with it now. And now it's now coming back to the one second cap time everyone is having i think they've had it the easy way for too long and people aren't quite adjusting no one's quite as vigilant watching all those doors and we do see a lot of sneaked caps and we've seen it in ecf to well and seen it a fair bit in oz fortress as well so we'll have to see if they are going to be able to adjust to the one second cap speed maybe we'll see some termo strats demo man up in the shoot or something to counter that it'll be interesting to see yeah, there's, uh, you know, I was on, on team with the Dr. Phil for a long time, and he, for a short while, was very famous for just always sitting in the tube. So he was just MG tube Dr. Phil, because that is one of the ways that you can hold it really well. Just have a demo man in there spamming stickies. But, like, these, like, there's so many opportunities for you to actually just abuse unlocks as well, because there's several unlocks that actually destroy stickies. So, you know, having stickies on the point and then watching the entrances, that's kind of the default way to do it. But, if your stickies disappear, then all of a sudden things get more complicated and you have to you know, send a soldier down there or like maybe in the ring have a soldier sit there. That's really good. Or maybe you just need to watch the entrances even harder. So there's a lot of uh, complications these days due to unlocks. And uh, you, know, you can argue whether or not that's a good thing or not. But the, the last map that we do have is uh, it's going to be Sunshine, that's going to be the fourth one, and then at, in the Decider it's going to be Snake Water. So it actually looks like it's going to be, like overall, some pretty slightly unusual maps here for this series. You know, we have Lockjam first, then we have Pro Lance, and then we have first Sunshine after that. Yep, uh, some, I don't know, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm quietly happy that product got banned straight off the bat because I my casting muscles are just non-existent at the moment. I haven't done this in too long and I couldn't deal with the product chaos. So this will be this will be fun. We'll be able to see some good structured, hopefully non-chaotic TF2. Uh matchups going into this match beta, I've found that uh logjam tends to be a very, very demo dependent map and as well as like uh, but it does give your flank scout a lot of opportunity to succeed as well with some long flanks. So that said, who are you going to be watching and what are your predictions for this map? Um, well, I, I'm not really going to... I'm going to leave the predictions to you. Um, <laughs> like <I'm, laughs> I think that's the smart thing to do because I haven't seen Jasmine T play at all. But uh, I'm going to be watching the soldiers a lot. As far as I remember... Like having being able to have a really strong soldier and then getting him through like sneak through chokes and stuff, it's gonna be really important. That's like as far as I remember, it was just always an issue of of soldiers causing issues because if you look at the flanks, they're pretty enclosed, right? There's a lot of walls around. So if a soldier can get in there, get really close, and then maybe take down a scout, then your your flank can really collapse. And that goes for both sides. So. Definitely going to be looking at, at a lot of soldiers on this map because I think they're pretty important. They might not have the best stats or anything. I think it's definitely a scout map. It's very open. You can see people coming from a long way and like especially middle. Look how open it is. Like you can almost just run sniper and just be able to see the entire mid if you just stand and choke, right? But it's uh, I'm, I'm definitely thinking scouts and soldiers are going to be, be really important, which is the opposite of what you said with demos. But yeah, we're going live. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, oh, we got it. We got baited. Uh, okay, so you you're not going to predict, Beta. You you call that uh, you call that being smart. I call that being a, a chicken. Whatever. We're we're not here to argue <laughs> semantics. Uh, I think this is we we did see this played in the um in the regular season. So as we are going live for realsies this time, uh, it was a three nil to Jasmine. Then I think don't quote me on that. And I expect we'll see a probably a pretty similar scoreline, except I want Sam to be the one to go huge for Zano here. So I'm going to say three to one to Jasmine T as uh, we're off to the first mid beater. Yeah, we see Paulson doing uh, the double sticky jump to mid. So he is slightly faster. Hasn't really been able to 
uh, sticky off the enemy demo either. So now we have both teams are kind of sitting up here. This is a mid that's very open. You can kind of Gears see everyone spy. coming. And Deer's on Spy. Yeah, that's very unusual. You can see the rest of Japanese. They are just sitting back doing nothing. And Deer actually got bumped into and taken damage. So they know about it. And then, oh, Paul's going to get the air shot there Gears immediately. Gears going to get the on Oh, the my Sam. God. Oh, this poor is, Sam. This is absolute yeah. chaos. Sean, Gio's still alive yeah, in the back in. field. Sorry, you keep going. Just pistoling down the medic, and he gets him as well. Wow, he just trades with Sean. That is such a good spy outcome here. And they, they didn't retreat there either. They just kind of stayed in Zeno. And some nice pipes coming out there from Redcoat. But I, I don't think that's going to be enough for, to save this middle. He has 8 HP, and eventually he's just going to go down. And that's going to be the first mid win coming out here from Jasmine T. Boss is still hiding around though. That was absolute chaos. I don't know if Geo realized that pregame had ended and just sort of went to roll with it, I, or if that was a planned play. I have absolutely no idea what to make of that one. We're going to see Jasmine with full uber advantage pushing through that side where him, although they're sort of thinking of it. Uh, Pause went in. He was hiding on mid. He tried to make a play but got found out. So that is both soldiers down for the side of Zeno. That's their sack play, and it means that Jasmine are going to still have their full uber advantage rolling into last year. They're going to come through this ramp room. Uber straight on top of Redcoat, who has been caught with his pants down. He is going to die for the second time in a relatively quick succession. Cookie is going to be playing the point uh, while Geo sticky, while Paulson sticking some off rather, and that's going to be a convincing second and last push to get Jasmine the first round after a very very strange mid. Yeah, it was a very clean last push there, just immediately catching out the demo man, trying to sticky them off, and then just playing the point. And taking down the demo man and then playing the point is just as textbook as things can get. And uh, once again, the demo man, it's very difficult for them to actually spam each other out. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. There's no weird spy plays to mid, so that could make things a lot more standard. But uh, yeah, it looks like uh, the sword is going to go down immediately to Sam here. And it is a uh, mid that really just allowed to be super passive and so far it's definitely looking a lot better when there's no spy around here for <laughs> for Zeno. So we actually have a pause in the middle of the mid. Uh, there we are. So convincing midwin that time to Zeno making the adjustment. Hertz was the first death there with the scouts playing relatively uh, safely on their medic holding hands. Paulson's trap's going to find Varna on Spire, except Redcoat's really managed to assert his high ground here. It's going to be even Ubers and Jasmine all looking to get out here, but Redcoat's managed to get a fair bit of spam on. Sean's under a lot of pressure and is forced to pop to the soldier on the high ground. That is Hertz. Uh, pop comes out in kind from Dave, and they have a much better Uber here. Paulson's going to be trying to collapse on the choke here, and Sean is going to get caught out at the tail end of his Uber. Sam's taking a duel on the flank, but Cookie comes to help out Elmo. They take down Sam, uh, and now it's just going to be a trickle with the remainder of Zeno going down to the much healthier players of Jasmine here. I think Pause is going to go down. I show is getting chased out of the choke. Varna goes down, and that is a much uh, better Uber end second hold coming out of Jasmine as they're going to take up mid. Yeah, just uh, I think the initial action there just really favored uh, Jasmine T. I, I didn't quite see it at the beginning of it. It was actually it wasn't a pause. It was actually just like a skip or something weird there. So so we didn't quite see it. It, it lagged out a little bit. So I, I missed the, the the very beginning of that. But it was definitely a really nice uh, initial confrontation there for Jasmine T. And then they just rolled out. Got some really nice uh, picks on the the reverse as they just came in with a lot of momentum and now they have this full Uber advance getting ready to move in onto last. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, they're much more prepared on the side of Xeno this time with the UCL's going to come up. The level 1 sentry is just spitting out a little bit of damage. Is eventually going to go down but not before finding Geo. Varna and uh, Paws are down so no soldiers on the side of uh, Jasmine. Sean is actually just going to come up on his Uber now and he's going to save Redcoat down on the point and that will signal a retreat from Jasmine. Clutch play there by Sean to get the Uber. Paulson's wiggling around in the lobby. is going to get caught eventually and Dave is going to kill Bind knowing that he was not long for this world. Uh, interesting thing to note that the uh, Spire on Logjam actually caps quite quickly and they are going to be able to easily deny Paulson and Dave's forward spawns there. Uh, there's a bit of a tangle going on on the flank as the Romas are going to oh, do the, the Roma thing. Oh, the classic Roma trade. The Roma thing. This. Oh, it's a, it's a thing of beauty. Uh, Jasmine up on a... Sorry, Jasmine up on a disadvantage, I should say. Uh, and they are going to be getting their Uber up, uh, Zeno, and looking to take this in with an Uber push. But before we do that, Bitter, I just want to point out something, is that Redcoat has been back up for... Zeno all of the season, but that also means that he hasn't played any log jam, and I think we've seen that coming into play a little bit in the mids, so I'm interested to see how he adjusts to this map going forward. 
Yeah, they have the uber advantage. It looks like they might go through the, the tunnel here. That, that will bring them really close, and there we go. Uh, it's going to get forced out by the roamer. Uh, Hertz will get it up pretty quickly. Sniper is getting forced back as well, but uh, it still just looks like it's going to be an uber trade for a point here, and uh, it's going to be a reverse uber here, but pushing out of last with an uber advantage is definitely a lot worse than pushing like into middle with an uber advantage, but like, surely Jasmine T, they're actually going to go for it here. But you can see they, they have moved out here. They're trying not to get Sticky Trap. And uh, so far, they have successfully achieved that. And it, oh my god, taking down Vanna is really nice. That's going to mean a lot less spam coming out here. And the further they get out here before using the better. Uh, Portis is actually going to get clapped there by Paulson as well. And Sam's going to go down again, trying to double down and get that force. But it's not going to happen. Dave, with the... Uh, the balls of titanium is not going to be popping that uber at any point. Uh, we did see, you were touched on it in pre-game, the defensive sniper out of Cookie there as Varna is going to jump into the choke and just get destroyed by the scout class and then Geo with the follow-up rocket. Xeno uh, still holding the S keys here, not being able to get the successful forces out. Sam is doing what Cookie did previously. He's up on that defensive sniper on the really long sight line of second. And I suspect Jasmine are going to try and go off the uh, off the Varna pick, but that is going to walk them right into the Sam sight line. So uh, their Uber is coming in through choke here for, uh, for Zeno, and they are going to trade it out. Slightly later pop for Dave, but nothing significant. Uh, Hertz is having a bit of a peek around on the flank. Uh, this post tube is probably going to favor Jasmine just because they don't have a sniper, but it's going to be a reset here. And the first real stalemate we've seen so far, unless Pause gets caught out, which he may well, yes, he does get caught out but traded out by Sam. Yeah, Hurt, you can see he was immediately in there trying to see if he can uh, find any kind of uh, leak in the enemy defense, but uh, as the, the counter snipe comes in here, it's going to be uh, an even situation. We actually see a soldier having actually managed to get really close. Uh, Bana, he could have jumped the medic there just fine. He decides to just spam instead. That was a bit of a weird decision. I thought he was just going to jump for sure. I thought that was just uh, an open invitation for him, but decides not to. And so, we just see uh, the spy coming out here from Elmo. Uh, you did mention a lot of spy could come into play, but not from Elmo. But uh, we'll yeah. see. It is a pretty obvious situation, though. Uh, yeah, it's obvious, but maybe that's why they won't expect it. I was going to say that. That's exactly what I expect Elmo to do is go for Sam, because those two, they are good friends. They are, <laughs> they are opposite flank scouts. They're ex-teammates. I thought that's exactly what he was going to do, and we said... <laughs> And we see the rude in chat from Sam. Uh, Hertz is going to die, but he is going to get the force out from Sean. There's a lot of players bleeding in behind here from Jasmine T. Cookie and Geo are both flooded the flank. Varna has tried to take the Uber forward, but he is going to uh, be not long for this world for it. Dave is not going to pop out yet. Uh, we've sort of reset into much more conventional positions. Pause is going to go for the big bomb into choke, but it's a Paulson pipe for his troubles. And again, this is something that... Uh, seems to be recurring so far in this map beater is that Zeno's soldier bombs are just not able to get the force out of Dave. He's holding those positions really well, baiting his players, baiting himself, and they're going to be Ubering into last while the back cap on Spire is on, though. But there's a single scout on the point. Cookie actually gets flashed perfectly as it baited everyone down there, and that's just going to be a complete meat grinder. There's some stickies on the point, but I'm pretty sure that's going to get cleaned up really well. Uh, extremely well executed over there, just baiting everyone down onto the point, flashing the Uber on it. And then when everyone drops down, there are just easy pickings for everyone. And the back cap didn't come in in time. The Spire, it does cap pretty fast, but it's not that fast again. So that's going to make it 2-0. to zero. Yeah, it doesn't help when your back capping scout gets blinded by Paulson. Sam wasn't too happy about that one. But again, <laughs> we're going to see mid-fight number three here. Paulson, again, significantly faster than Redcoat. And Redcoat not having played this match. Uh, map much is showing. Hurts early aggression onto the hut of Zeno here. Uh, really good early position for... Um, for Jasmine, but the frags are going pretty oh, even. Oh, Geo Pause gets the, the medic. Big bomb in, but Geo's the one that's able to get the medic, but Pause's bomb is actually the one that I'd say did the most damage. They drew a lot of eyes, did a Dave lot of damage. Dave being chased by like a super weak soldier. A single arrow will kill him, and he actually gets him. There's still a scout, but the, the medkits are just really convenient here. There's, that was a soldier behind as well, and Dave gets out. Really huge play there. And this middle... You know, not going to Jasmine T, but uh, it looks like it will eventually be able to recap by them. Uh, yeah, because they did actually get the uh, cap pretty early on there before Zeno managed to recap. So they had those forward spawns coming into this fight. Both teams have had forward spawns already so far, even though it doesn't 
feel like the mid fight's completely over. And just with pure aggression, Redcoat and Aisha are going to get taken down. That's most of the combo down for Zeno, and they're going to be forced to back out of this mid. And I expect we will see just one soldier left on the cap here as we uh, Jasmine will continue to go forward. Uh, Uber is up on Dave as he did survive the mid. Sean is not quite near his yet. Sam is going on an adventure in the flank into the... Um, having a duel with Hertz on the mid is taking him super low, but uh, Cookie comes out to help his low health Roma and is able to take down Sam there. But that has edge Sean close to Uber. Realistically he probably should have been building slightly better there and they would have had Uber to defend. I think they'll still try but again these single soldier bombs from Jasmine, uh, from uh, Zeno rather are not finding Dave ever. He's too good to be forced to a single soldier bomb and they really need to start having a second plan to force him here as we're probably going to see an Uber trade out onto second here as Sean is caught in a really really bad position and forced to pop out while Dave is going to be able to kite very comfortably. Sean getting forced there by a single scout just sneaking in. Like, that was basically the equivalent of what, what we see not working for Zeno there. Just a single player just getting in there and forcing out the medic. But uh, this time around, it worked. So, uh, Elmo, he will get the force out. He will die for it, but it doesn't really matter. He has respawned already. We have a big uber advantage on Dave. And a little curious to see where they're going to go. It looks like it's going to be this, this flank routed through the cave once again and uh, that's pretty interesting because i remember we would never ever push this way and actually uh hurt's gonna get snapped out really early here but dave he still hasn't used we saw before that they just used through the cave but this time around that's not going to be the case and uh, now the sniper gets jumped so now dave's going to be a lot more comfortable pushing out here. but they have lost three players so it didn't work out at all either way like we would always push the other way and that was actually soda coming in for the flank perfectly timed jump there but no gets taken out by quickly oh i should meet shots oh, dave in the back that's huge by him, he's just following them in through the uh, cavern there, and that's a much better defensive and uber disadvantage there from uh, from Zeno, as they are able to collapse on the flank, and then Dave is caught with his pants down, and going to get taken down by the Singaporean Super Scout. Uh, there's a little bit of a contest coming in from uh, Elmo here, and he's managed to find his way onto Sean, uh, does a little bit of damage, but is going to get taken down. Sean is not going to need to pop there, but I agree with you, I'm not liking these sort of cave pushes. Both teams have tried one so far, and it just puts you at, like, if you get called early, it puts you so far away from where the other team is, and it's just it's just a disadvantageous position to be. Uh, Geo's in behind here, and he's going to be trying for the force. Arshio's taken down very low, but Sean hasn't eaten a single point of damage yet. Elmo Mo's up on Engineer for the last, and I expect we'll be seeing Zeno uh, make that first Hertz is in a pretty so good far. position. Look at his Hertz. Oh, he's actually just going to run into a, a map hacking soldier there. Nice job from Paws. He just snuffed that out perfectly. Now it's going to be a scout on point, but it actually gets taken down before he could get flashed. That's going to definitely be a, a big hurt to this last hole, but so far it's a really nice clean. A single pyro on the point's not going to be enough. That's going to be a very clean clean up there from Sino. That kind of bring it up to two to one and there, this is exactly what they needed and it all came off of that uh, really failed push going through the cave area and then uh, Dave dropping to a scout and a soldier combining onto him from two different directions where he couldn't see everything but now it's anyone's game here and I'm curious what we're going to see in this middle. So far both teams have been extremely passive just kind of been sitting back and waiting for some Romo to jump into them. Uh, yeah, and we're probably going to see a little bit more of the same. Both the scouts setting them, uh, both team scouts rather, setting themselves up on the high ground. Uh, Jasmine are playing the other side here, but Hertz is going to go for the high bomb, gets absolutely floated, finds his way on a red coat though, taken down very low, and that's going to be followed up on by Elmo. Paulson's going to get Sam as well, but that's a scout and a demo for two soldiers here, meaning that there's a lot more bomb potential on the Xeno side. But the scouts of uh, Jasmine are doing a lot of work here. But Sean's actually going to defend himself well against Cookie. He's going to get that crossbow. Paulson's going to get taken down. And that's actually dragged Dave out of position as well, trying to crossbow his demo to keep him alive. Elmo's going to come back in and see what he can salvage. But he can't salvage anything, Beta, because he's dead. And that is a full uber advantage and a good mid win from Jasmine. They are, oh, sorry, from Zeno. <laughs> They're finding their way back into this map. They're adjusting well. Indeed they are, and it looked pretty good for Jasmine early on. The, that big soldier bomb in the skybox really just forced everyone back from Sino, so Jasmine, they were in a really good position, but then when the, the counter push came in, the, the soldiers did so much damage, and they just took so much attention as well that scouts could just run in and just clean up really easily, and there's just no one here that's going to be able to do anything. You can see the spy checking really diligent right now. There is no spy, however, there's a sniper with you. He's all the way back and last. He's kind of just hoping for a hero sniper, some sort of lucky 
uh, snipe off of uh, on someone to just maybe ease the, this push here. But it does come in now. We have the Uber. There's a fully upgraded sentry gun, but that goes down immediately. The Pyro didn't protect that at all. And now there's a scout on the point. There's no one there left to get on it, and it's just going to be a bit too slow. It's going to be 2-2. Two to two. Jasmine T, after being up 2-0 to zero very early on, has now fallen all the way back down to a draw game, and the momentum is just firmly in Zeno's favor. I really, really liked that last push there from uh, from Zeno. They were able to get in clean through the right, and then Varna played the very fat pocket role and was able to zone out the uh, Jasmine players that were kiting the Uber and let them play point. Paulson's very aggressive on this mid. He's getting a lot of sticks into the Zeno show, but, um, and that's going to mean that they have a lot of early positioning on this mid do, uh, uh, do Jasmine, but it's not really going to amount to much. They're still they're hesitant about the soldier bombs, and Geo's going to get absolutely destroyed, but Varna, Doge, and Sean all go down, and that's going to be a, a big mid win for Jasmine there. They're all going to sell out and see if they can get Dave. Both sort of Gouts coming in now. Aishao's going to put some damage into Dio. Sam's going to follow alive, up. Sam's this. coming in and Sam's going to find both of them. Sam is immense. And Aishao up on the cleanup now and just lays an egg on a roller. That is so clutched by Sam and Aishao. It's unfortunate that Aishao, I want to say if he was on Australian ping, he probably would have got that kill as well. Really, really clutch play cleanup there from Sam and Aishao. Yeah, the, the two soldiers from Sino, they, they basically bombed in the same spot and took the same damage here. Is this soldier's gonna go in here? Paulson, he really wants to get this, and he actually does get it. Will he pay with his life? No, he actually gets paws as well. So a uh, really nice play here from Paulson. Uh, really showing really good DM. Now Scout's gonna come in here, take down Redcoat, who has overextended quite a bit, and now it's gonna be an almost just a Spire cap here coming in. There's two Scouts and a Medic. Those are probably the best players to have alive, but it's uh, still very dangerous for them. If they overextend, they can just lose everyone, and yeah, Sean just is going to go all the way back to last, and Spire is just a foregone conclusion at this point. So, uh, very weird mid there, they're almost everyone just overextending because of uh, their previous success. Alright, uh, Ubers are basically... Geo's on the almost, oh, oh, Geo, that's huge. There's been so much damage spread out, there's just a collapse coming in. That's a very, very ballsy dry push from Jasmine. Everyone's going to die, basically, on the side of Jasmine, but they do, importantly, get Sean. Interesting play there. Uh, not waiting for the Ubers. I was going to say that it was a probably an uh, ill-advised mid-fight, uh, mid-recontest, rather, from Xeno, because they didn't factor in the forward spawns there, and Paulson was just able to flex his DM muscles. But after that all-or-nothing play from Jasmine, they are going to be able to recap on the Spire, but... Uh, Jasmine definitely want a piece of this, despite the fact that Geo's only just got back up on the field. Zeno should be able to zone them out here, and that's exactly what Varna's doing. So want to jump high and jump away from the damage while still spamming them out. But he is actually going to get found by the stickies of Paulson, and I expect that that's uh, going to cue the contest here from Jasmine as we see Hertz poking in through the cave side. But Elmo's got in very, very clean through the uh, through the choke point, and that's going to cue the floodgates opening for Jasmine. All of their players just collapsing in through choke. Uh, both soldiers bombing, and they're going to kill every one of the combo for Xeno. Pause is caught out behind, and he is going to be a late death. Dave's coming up on his Uber now. Varner and oh, Sam up last. Yeah, it's and good Uber force here from uh, from Varner, actually. He hasn't even died yet, but the the spawners are just not even close by. It seems. Nope, that's going to be another round. And so another really solid uh, just DM fight win there. Just I think Varner going down to the stickies there while after zoning them out. Just, it just almost turned into a suicide play, which is definitely not what he was going for. So, so that was very unfortunate. And then once Jasmine T get this tiny little advantage, they just seem to ride off of that really well. And just they are able to win these DM fights very comfortably almost every time. So we have another mid fight going here. And it's going to be 3 to 2 in favor of Jasmine. Yep, uh, again, very tentative, but Jasmine taking the earlier position at the moment. Sam and Elmo having a bit of a duel underneath, and Elmo wins that one comfortably. It's going to queue out the soldier aggression. Really, really nice rockets there coming out from all of the soldiers on the Jasmine side, whereas uh, Paws and Varner are going to get taken down. Oh, Cookie destroyed. Oh, my God. That was a good pipe for sure. But uh, that's going to be the only positive thing coming out from that mid. For the first time ever, we basically saw Jasmine getting uh, a Romer. We've seen Romers jump the house of the enemy side quite a lot, but every time there's a scout to deny it. But this time around, we actually, if after a little while, saw Jasmine T actually get a soldier up there uh, uncontested. But once that happens, uh, it's just over us. Uh, uh, another force comes in here, and really nice there from Hertz. Gets the force out. She is going still last as lines. well. He's going... 
Yeah, and I suspect he's going to get this. They're going to see the little stutter, which is a bit of a strange uh, strange bug on this map. This last point, but he is going to get that just sneaking through that top left area. Uh, Jasmine playing the, the Chaos Ball a little bit better than Xeno there. Um, and yeah, it really shows. I think Xeno are really trying to play this aggressive, positive play style that they played like for most of this season and definitely all through last season. But they really need to respect that Paulson is always going to have the correct focus fire. He's always going to shut you down in chokes. And they need to uh, really be aware of how much of an impact Paulson is going to have uh, being the most experienced demo in Australia at the moment. Uh, another mid fight, again, just very, very tensitive in these early stages of the mid. We're not seeing any of that early soldier aggression that we saw in the uh, earlier mids, as it's just really is just a spam war. Paulson is sort of seeing if he can get a bit frisky as Redcoat's doing the exact same thing on the opposite side. Paws is just eating chip shots. He's going to try and jump, but he's not going to get a great deal done for it, and he's going to get stickied down. Paulson's going to find two kills, actually, and then Varno trying to bomb as well is going to get taken down. Both medics have actually got Uber, and only three players have died so far this mid. Jasmine's going to be the... Uh, Elmo, rather, is going to be the first one to die for Jasmine, but Dave, uh, not forced, not under any duress at all that mid. Very very, very slowly developing one and the moment Paws tried to get anything going he was just shut down immediately. I mean crucially Sean had to actually Uber there at the end of that mid in order to get out alive so they will have no Uber here at all. You can see they are actually trying to spam it out a little bit maybe contest the spire maybe get some sort of easy force out. You know it's always nice to just send out some spam because sometimes a medic will just walk into four rocket centers and a road or something and drop right. It happens like one in a hundred times but you might as well take the chance but uh, Dave is not going to fall for that, looks like. So they are getting it to go into this last year, and they're going to go from the right side. I think this is the first push we've seen from here, and there's basically no one there. But they are going to send a single scout uh, down close to the point, but so far, okay, they get the demo, man. That's going to definitely open things up. Now everyone has to be very diligent about the point. But uh, it's a pretty even fight so far, but definitely Jam Team, they have an advantage right now. They have a scout down onto the point, but he actually gets taken down. We have a demo man on the point. Can he actually do it? No, he cannot do it in time, and here comes the Uber. But Paulson, he tries to take out the other 9 HP. Not going to be able to do it. But a nice hold here, nonetheless, here coming out. And Dave's going to have a slight Uber advantage now. Uh, that he is. Good pop by Sean, although I don't think he realized until quite a bit afterwards that Paulson had nothing loaded and had uh, whipped his pain train out. Otherwise, I don't think he probably he would have used there, but... Uh, doesn't matter, better safe than sorry in that sort of a situation. Dave is actually building this with Cookie extremely well, and they're going to be able to get up on the river quite oh quickly no. here. Sean is actually going to go down to her. It's like completely missed that. Yeah, I, I didn't quite see it. Like, he he got juggled up into a corner, but I didn't see why he was out there. I guess they were just trying to, to forward hold to just slow down this push, because they did have a slight uber disadvantage, and just slowing it down at the first end would be a really good idea. But as it is now, they've lost their medic. About to lose the demo man. Redcoat's gonna go down. No Stiggy's on the point now. They're gonna send a scout onto it. Everyone else is gonna jump it. It's just gonna be Stiggy's and Brock is just shooting down here, and that's gonna be a cap. And man, that was a really clutch play there from Hertz. Just that made it a lot easier for sure. And I think they were just trying to get into the lobby to just slow things down. Uh, yeah, I think they were. They must have been, but there were still players on last at that same time. It just seemed like a very sort of half, uh, like one foot in, one foot out sort of play. And obviously it shows because they didn't have all the entrances covered and their med goes down there. So not a great play by Xeno. As it is five to two, this is going to be the sixth mid... Uh, no, I can't do maths. Is eighth mid fight? Yeah, yep. that's how it works. We're going to see early shoulder aggression this time from Herds, and he's going to jump away, get pipped down. But that's actually opened it up for Geo, who is not going to get seen as he bombs in here and he's going to be able to take down Sean really well. Paws is taken down very low. He's going to trade it out. Uh, it's just scout cleanup city here at the moment. They're trying to aggress on. And Redcoat's actually bombed in really, really large. Gets a huge sticky onto Dave and a lot of damage into Paulson as well. It's Paulson versus two scouts. This is, uh, I think Demo Man have nightmares that look like this and he's going to get chipped down by the uh, remaining Xeno scouts. And that seems to be the key for these mids that Xeno are winning is where their scouts are alive at the end of the mid and able to play clean up. That's where they seem most comfortable, and that's a good mid by Xeno, but they need to get a hurry up to get themselves back into this because there's uh, around about six minutes left, and they are three rounds behind, so they need to really get into gear, Beto. Yeah, once you get to, to this kind of situation, you need to be really quick about it. Otherwise, you're just going to, at some point, get slowed down. And if you lose a, a fight now... Instead of just seeing a push coming out from Jasmine T, we could just see them just kind of go, oh, we have 60% Uber, let's just sit around and do nothing, because the static code just favors them. But yeah, I'm hoping we, we get to see some sort of really key push, and I, I think we see Elmo here and Sniper. I think they're expecting this push to come in, so hopefully they can get 
some stuff here done. But they actually have really some really nice aggression coming in here. The soldiers on the medic though. Oh no, Sean going down. That's really huge from Hertz. That's definitely saving this because there was otherwise a really good push. Just gonna be Paulson and the medic here on last. Now they're gonna get jumped. And oh my god, Paulson just destroys it. But the, now there's a scout on point. Oh, okay, never mind. I Not quite. I, I don't want to. I wasn't really paying much attention to what was going on on that last there, but Aisho actually got off the cap a little bit too early when Zeno were obviously expecting themselves to be able to play the last point. Redcoat's going to get scout class trying to get out of there. He was never making it out. But that might be a, like a critical mistake there from Aisho as uh, Dave has not been forced yet. Obviously, Sean died on that second as clutch play from Hertz, and Dave did not. So they are going to be sitting pretty with the full Uber advantage here. No force play coming out from uh, oh, Zeno again. at all. Hurts Hurts in very deep, but Paulson is as well, trying to follow up on that. Uh, Varna's going to get taken down. Hurts traded out. Sam is in the choke and the sniper. Very, very low, but he's actually going to get the headshot onto Paulson. That's huge. Geo's going to get taken down by a red coat pipe. The low health Sam sniper is going to get taken down. Dave still has Uber through all of this, but uh, Zeno do have a Bonus player advantage. The medic as well. And there oh, we are. Paulson's going to be able to get it. the force. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely good. But if they can just kite this really was. Xena could actually come back out here and contest Spire. It's going to be pretty hairy, but getting people on top of that Spire is very difficult as well. So if they just slow it down here a little bit while they wait for the respawner, there we go. They're going to be just fine. There's a scout behind lines, but he gets taken down. So the cleanup is real. And there's two players down and a lot of people hurt. They're all he's in and so deep. <laughs> he's not even in deep. He's just in high. A lot of air shop attempts going out. None of them hit. That's a shame. But... <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I think he must have walked on a sticky trap while he was Ubered or something. Yeah, yeah it's that's always fun funny. when you see people just like look straight up into the sky and just shoot rockets like up <laughs> at a 90 degree angle. It's super good. But yeah. uh, unfortunately, it didn't hit. And now it's just going to be this half semi push coming out. You can kind of see half the team is forward here, while the rest is struggling to catch up. And unfortunately, Pause actually goes down to Hertz there. Because they're going to have another Roma trade. Those will never not be funny to me. But uh, the spam has come out here. And it's very difficult because, so, you know, they're trying to push with a non Uber into an Uber right now. And that's usually just a recipe for disaster. And Sean, he's uh, trying to get out alive now. But unfortunately, they don't have time to do this either. Now, it's, we're pretty much in an area where it's impossible to win. So at this point, it's just a matter of actually getting momentum for the next map. And, you know, if you can drop Dave and just win some DM fights, you'll, you'll probably feel a lot better going into the next one. I think um, I think Zeno will be feeling pretty good uh, already, honestly, as we're going to see an Uber trade going out of choke. Uh, Geo, the master of these Uber trades, and he is going to be going a long way behind here to allow his team to flood in through the choke. Sam and Paws are caught out in the flank here. Sam's going to get taken down by Cookie. Paws is going to uh, get his opposite Roman number, but uh, Frags are going to be traded out here at the choke. Ashow is going in super deep. He's put, uh, really softened up Paulson. Paulson is just going to manage to matrix dodge away from those red coat stickies, but he's going to get found by his fellow Western Australian now. West Australian, uh, Sean. Redcoat's gonna donk Elmo with the pan. Uh, Dave is running for his dear life. Hertz is coming in to sort of keep him occupied, but I think we're just seeing a little bit of chaos at the moment here, Beta. But I think, like, for a map that wasn't their pick, I think Zeno are going to be feeling pretty good, especially since this is the first time this season they've actually managed to get rounds off Zeno and, uh, off Jasmine, rather, and they've been... Like, I, th I think they've been good in patches. They've looked the best that they have against uh, Jasmine this season. And that's interesting considering that they have the uh, Redcoat stepping in for Doge. Uh, Elmo's up on his main. He's on the Spire. He's loving life at the moment. But I suspect with a mid 20 left, uh, unless we see something uh, coming out with this Uber trade, it's going to be 5-2 to two to Jasmine on this first map beater. A heavy on Spire. Absolutely disgusting. And they kind of just win this fight six man to zero. Just a perfect wipe, perfect fight. That's going to be definitely it for this map. But yeah. Uh, I definitely think that we, we saw Jasmine T. They actually had a couple of pushes where they got completely stuffed by Zeno, and then Zeno just managed to get all the way in there. And you know, when, when Dave dropped, it was already in this really bad situation for, for Jasmine T. Like, even if he hadn't dropped and just popped it, it would have been a terrible pop, you know? So, like, the fight was already won at that point. So, those kind of situations definitely what Zeno they need to hold on to, because if they can just win those uh, push kind of situations, 
whether it being pushed on, and then push all the way back and win that fight. That's a very strong foundation to build uh, your game on. And there you're going, oh my god, Sam <laughs> somehow gets a pick. He was like way overextended and he just didn't care. He just got a pick anyway. As everyone else is just like funneling out there, just feeding Geo. <laughs> hey, come on, Geo, get the 5k. There we go. Good man. Uh, will get Paulson him. expresses his love for Sam in the chat as well. Well, no, uh, no hard feelings, no love lost in this match here as we're going to see the final score on map one of the Oz Fortress Season 23 Premier Division Grand Final. Logjam is going to go 5-2 to two to the people who picked it, which is Jasmine T. Uh, not wholly unexpected, but I'd still say that's a positive showing for Zeno and signs of life going forward. Absolutely, and... I, I assume we're going to have some logs on uh, the screen. I, I'm looking at logs already because that's what I always need to, to do whenever I, I see a game. I'm like, I, I saw that, but what really happened? Let, let me look at these stats and tell me what's going on. First and, thing uh, I see is uh, the Singaporean superstar, I shall top damaging in the server. I, I didn't expect that. I don't think you expected that. That is a really, really, that's a big game for a pocket scout. Yeah, I didn't notice it that at all. Like, there was definitely a couple of situations on mid where, where Aishu and Sam did really well, but that was almost the only thing that I really noticed. Uh, it just goes to show that sometimes people can do a lot of work without you really being flashy or anything, because that was that's really monstrous. Whenever a scout top damages, you know he's doing well. And it's not like it was like a slow game or anything either. Uh, Koki does top kill, so he had a very good game as well. I think almost all the scouts <laughs> did pretty well here, where Elmo was the, the worst one. He went 25 for 21, right? So he died probably too much, but other than that, all the scouts just really showing up to play. Yeah. I think that's Elmo just doing Elmo things. He likes to sort of operate on the flank and sort of exist independently to his like to the rest of his team. So that's Elmo. He's always going to be a factor in any team's mind. He's just such a good DM player, even though he does uh, main that bloody RCS game now. So, oh well. Uh, the Romas are doing the Roma thing. Both of them are putting the team on their backs and carrying the death stats. Uh, it's a noble class, the the mighty Roma. <laughs> Horrifically underpowered. But, um, yeah, it's... I don't know. Uh, Gully I mean, Watch, one thing I will yeah, say... Sorry, you in, go. In, yeah, so one thing we, we can say uh, in favour of, uh, of Elmo is that he got a lot of met. Like not if not picks, then med forces. It was almost like uh, like pause was doing a, a lot of jumping in there, and just it never worked. Whereas sometimes Elmo did get in there on his own as well, but that uh, you, that actually did tend to work quite a lot. So I think a lot of his deaths are those things where in the stats it looks terrible because the medic used their Uber and you died. So that's just all negative stats for you, but you actually won anyway. So. I will say that in defense of Elmo. He actually did get uh, those kind of stuff thing, thing got, get done. So like, he did better than uh, his stats might initially look like. Yeah. But yeah. I think he, he's going to have a big role to play on this map as well. As one of the like one of the big ways to break a mid to second stalemate on Gully Wash is to have those scouts bleed through the lower door, and I think that's something that Elmo is going to absolutely relish the opportunity to do is to bleed behind, uh, like sort of float around and draw players into fighting him, where he can take those one v ones and really open things up. That's going to be something that he really enjoys. I also think Gully Wash is going to suit Zeno for a few reasons in that. Uh, one, it's a conventional map and a very demo-centric map at that. So Redcoat, who hasn't uh, got the best synergy with this team having not being core due to Doge still being asleep because he's a dummy, uh, I think so I think that will favour him and that'll make him feel relatively comfortable. But that said, that uh, it's a demo-centric map, so you always have to look out for Paulson on this. Also, one thing to note is that this is definitely a better soldier map uh, than basically any other. I think Gully Wars might be the best soldier map in the, the pool, just because, like, Big Door is very good for soldiers, lots of walls and stuff, right? And there's a lot of indoor areas, and just also the... There's, 
a lot less distance to cover a lot of the time. So, like, middle is probably the most open area, and second can also be to some degree, but you don't actually do a whole lot of fighting on, like, the main area of second. So there's a lot of chokes and stuff going on. So it could be that Pause is going to have a much better game this time around, you know, because it's yeah. a lot easier to get close and, and do damage and stuff. So if I'm, memory I'm serves, Pause is actually really good at that uh, this map. He, uh, he likes playing that sort of... I think it was Seagull that once famously said, if you don't top damage as Roma on this map, you have no excuse. You're not playing well. But uh, I think Pause will, like, exactly like you said, he'll really, really like uh, sort of this map change, and I think it'll suit the way that he wants to play as well. So, yeah, as we did get baited with the ready up there, so we have a little bit more time to talk about this. We have a minute, we're being told by our pr the production gods that be. So, um... One thing that I think Xeno needs to really, really work on coming into this map is just their pressure onto Dave. Dave never really, like, he did have, he only had a few less deaths than Sean in a three round loss. So that's a good showing by Sean, who I think has consistently improved, like, season after season. But Dave never really felt like he was under particular amounts of stress. They need to work on ways to pressure him and get him to force other than those single soldier bombs because they were oh they had maybe a five percent success rate i'd say beta so i'm looking to see some improvement out of the soldiers and the general pressure from zeno as we are going to go live onto map two which is gully wash uh zeno's pick take me to mid beta Sure thing, and uh, Paulson's gonna go through choke, and so will Redcoat. And the uh, Redcoat's gonna immediately get jumped. This is a really nice way to deal with the enemy demo, right? So Redcoat, he didn't die, but he is out of the fight for a while. So this means that everyone else can go forward. But it looks like Jasmine T have not taken that opportunity. They actually played it pretty passively because they, they just lost that bomber immediately. And here comes the bomb in, and a nice rocket from Paul is gonna take down Cookie. Just uh, that's gonna definitely cost everyone in here. And uh, now even a sorter coming up through the drop down, and the second sorter will just chase as well. So full-on retreat here from Jasmine T and that was a, a really strong mid coming out there just dealing with that Roma immediately onto Redcoat and then they're gonna just ride that momentum all the way into last it looks like. He said we were looking for a bigger game from Pause. he's delivering so far. Uh, let's get our love hats and chat for the most lovable guy in Oz Fortress please. Everyone loves to see Pause going large. Uh, Ubers are gonna be even but Paulson is down for a little while so I want to see Jasmine uh, I want to see Jasmine bit put on the back foot here because this is where Zeno really well, needs to start pressuring. Single bomb from Pause again. He's going to play on point. Asha is going to think about it, but I really think you should make a bit more of a demo down. You can. There's no threat of stickies, so I really think you should be trying to pressure with all of your players, not just your Roma. It's a tough position to be in as we'll see Jasmine retake the lobby. It is an even uber situation, and uh, I don't expect Pause to off class, so we'll see what they do here. He could open the door up for someone else to go back, but he has not chosen to do that either. So it's just going to be Cookie Cutter versus Cookie Cutter with a bit of a forward hold going on. There's no real stickies on the door, but of course they don't know that. So <laughs> they've actually been blown around quite a bit, so that's why it doesn't look like they are there. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of like this forward hold. We, we saw Lego back in the day in, in Europe do this a lot, where they just hold the top uh, quite a bit, but... Uh, Looks like Jasmine T just eventually decides to fall back. They do have a spy that's just checking and spawn. Yep, that's all he's doing. And so that's just going to be a pretty standard bolt here. And now it's just a matter of how will Xenophobia Phobia decide to go in here and try to like get a force up. Because that's usually what you're doing. And we actually see a sentry going up by Elmo in this... Uh, this little nook and cranny, and Geo actually goes down. That's going to be some some space for them. But this sentry gun is really bad for denying jumper because it will actually like teleport people into your medic, basically, is what it's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Something that happens, God. Uh, Paulson had sticks on the pillar, and Varna found them. Probably not the angle that Paulson intended him to, but uh, did just get blasted into the sentry there. As we're going to see Paulson leading this Uber out uh, of the shutter door, he's peeking, oh, no, and no, he's no, actually found oh, Sean. No. That's disastrous for Zeno. Yeah, Sean got, like, caught on a wall. Like, who placed that wall there? God damn it, Arnold, how could you? But, uh, yeah, he's just not going to force it. He was just stuck, and that is an absolute disaster. There's no one back to back cap either. So that's just going to be uh, basically a gift from Sino to Jasmine T. Man, that is painful. That's going to be bragging rights. Uh, Sean and Paulson are gym buddies from time to time, so that one's going to 
That one's going to be coming up again. Paulson's got bragging rights here so far. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, as they are going to try and push in uh, through Big Door here, our Jasmine. But they're eating a lot of spam. They're trying to get in for free. Paulus is trying to isolate the flank frags, but it's actually a 3-3 choke Big Door split here from Jasmine, and Sam's going to find Geo up on the sniper as well. Uh, Doge is going to... No, that's Rip Doge Varna, for God's sake. Varna's going to go down to Elmo in the big door. Uh, they're still trying to find their way in here, but they do have to fear the Sam Sniper, do Jasmine. It's still Uber advantage, but Sean's getting very close, so we'll see if Paulson and co. want to lead this in here, but Zeno's positioning is impeccable. They've rotated up to the top to make sure that they get their Uber charge, and I think we're just going to be seeing an even Uber's stalemate here with the Sam Sniper watching the big door from the long angle up the top. He's and he finds notes. Hertz. Yeah, that was actually a really nice example of how sure they, they were really slow there, and they slowly played players, but eventually Cena was just able to get in there, and he gets another soldier pick there. Sam, he does not like soldiers and Americans, it looked like. You will just snipe them with no mercy, and that <laughs> scout as well. Oh my god, Sam, he's just hitting every shot. Like, none of these shots have been particularly difficult, but he just hits every single time, and that is uh, definitely impressive in its own right. Now he's in big door, and he is just getting so many free looks, and he has missed a couple of shots now, but the Uber has been forced to choke, and I think it's just going to be Jasmine. They, I think they're going to have to run. They've just bled way too many players. Geo's... Oh, oh, Sam, he's on fire. Um, Geo's actually behind now, and he's um, coming up around behind the choke. Cookie's going up, drop down. Geo's on the spy, actually, and he's going to pistol wow. down Sean for the second time this match. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up earlier. Actually, when um, when Sean dropped, Paul, uh, Geo had actually spawned on Spy, so he, he quickly switched off afterwards. But he, that play had been stewing in the back of his mind for a little bit. He's finally able to bust it out. Sean, uh, poor Sean. There's not much you can do about that when you get pistol whipped by the Spy class. Uh, he's going to be up around the same time as Dave, though, so Dave's going to have a relatively insignificant Uber advantage, especially trying to push out from last. But Elmo oh, is no, behind. This, uh, oh my god, Elmo almost got him. He was hiding behind lines. That could have been just uh, the best way to make Sean just want to rage quit TF2 forever. If you just get taken out. But Geo actually gets uh, picked out there by Aishu. Just jumps in there in his face and then Rana will get the nice cleanup kill. So now it's two players down. This is a good time to do a lot of pressure and send in a suicide. And the scout is uh, all the way in here. Aishu, that is not a guy you want to let in for free. But it looks like they have shot them down. There's a single soldier on point. He's going to actually jump off of the point now. He's going to go back down there again. And no, this push has been completely shut down. Maybe a bit oversellers there by Xenophobia. And Sean is the only one alive. I think that's a tricky position for Xeno to be in there because you do have the two picks and you do want to make something happen. The dry push is what you do uh, normally, but Sam being up on the sniper really sort of staggered their ability to get aggressive and get in there. Geo is well behind on Soldier this time, though. He's not going to be able to find Sean. He's going to get taken down. Sam's going to be up on the field, back on scout here. As Oh, that's a really, really nice couple of rockets from Hertz. He's going to take down Varna, but Paws is going to trade out his fellow Soldier. Jasmine has Ubered into Big Door here, but their Uber isn't finding a... Oh, wait, no, it's finding everything. I'm getting my colors confused. What's going on? That's a really, really fat Uber there from Cookie and Paulson. Sam is doing his best just to put... Uh, put some damage in and slow them down. Sean is actually, uh, he's well out. He hasn't died during either of these pushes. He's just continually backed up. So he's probably going to have Uber for last year and he's going to have a big ad, but uh, pushing out of, uh, pushing out of last with Uber ad and no picks is going to be tricky beta, but it looks like they are not hesitating for a moment, I'll say no, and they are rolling their way out to the shutter door as Geo's in River. Yeah, usually you you actually push Riverside. Oh my god, you has not spotted the scout. All right, that's pretty tragic for him. The Uber will get taken down, and now we do have the pick and the Uber advantage going down. And we actually see the Uber being used in Big Door. That's not really uh, the perfect spot. Dave is very safe, but they will definitely... looks like they're going well, to well get in. They actually get Paulson. Yeah, yeah Paulson getting joggled in there. So huge. This is something that Jasmine liked to do with Doge, who's a very DM-heavy demo man. They like to uh, solo over him a lot, actually, as I'll cut myself off. Uh, Jasmine counter is coming in. Sean's going to get caught, surely. Redcoats managed to jump out, though, so they found the medic with this Uber. They're still a demo down. Uh, I expect we'll see them re-push probably, like, soon as Paulson gets there relatively quickly. Just checking all the spots here. Hurts and Paulson going to do the Roman thing. <laughs> <laughs> you roll my trade. Oh, that's beautiful in Victor. There was actually two scouts that were like looking to go behind, but they eventually just decided not to do it. So now we have a slight Uber advantage here once again for Jasmine T. They should definitely realize this. And uh, they're just pushing everyone back into this lobby side. And I think if they just build really efficiently here, they can actually just push in 
But there will be a Pyro, there will be a Sentry Gun, so it's going to be quite difficult, but I mean, if you have an Uber Advantage, you might as well use it to push. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Pyro is going to set himself up around the Sentry here, so that's a pretty strong last hold that we've seen. Um, it's not the one that gets used sort of in the top levels of NA and EU CF2. And Wilson trying to focus down that sentry and he's going to get it at the very, very tail end of that uber, but not before Pause finds his opposite Roma. Redco's going to get the kill onto Cookie. Redco's going to get taken down, I believe it was in the water area, but this is a really good last hold coming out of Zeno there as the... Um, as the well, look at the time on the point. Oh, Paulson's hiding and sneaky. He's going to stick the point. Pause knows that he's there. Pause. Oh, oh my god, he wow. gets it! That's... that's clutch. Poor yeah, pause. That, like, you never expected demo there. That was unbelievable. Yeah, people should have checked that. Like, jeez. But they didn't check it, and Paulson, he clutches it. And Demo Man is a very powerful class, and he had the pain train as well. So that's going to be the first round going to Jasmine T. It was a very <laughs> long and back and forth round here, but looks like uh, neither soldier will jump the demo man immediately here. But uh, <laughs> two of them have go down immediately. To pause though, the pause bomb from underneath is going to take down the Jasmine medic, and that means that they're just going to be able to play with their scouts with heals. But Aisha gets isolated. They really wanted to play that scout cleanup game that worked so well for them on Mogdam did Zeno, but now it's going to be the scouts of Jasmine that are going to crush the remainder of Zeno. Sean got the saw. Sean got what? two saws. But no, actually, no. Elmo bashed himself to death sh to deny Sean the saw. We'll call it tactical. 93% uh, on Sean. Had he, had Elmo not bashed himself to death, he would have got the Ubers off the Uber saws. But um, really, really good bomb there by Paws initially, but the cleanup crew was just in there. <laughs> That's, uh, that's really you know funny. what the flavor text is on the basher? I'm pretty sure it says, hit your enemy, apply bleed. If you miss the enemy, hit yourself. Genius. Yeah, I'm that's pretty sure says. that's what it says as well. And I'm going to say that Elmo totally intended to bash himself to death so that Sean didn't get Uber. Like, he's a, he's a cerebral game of that one that was totally intended. But uh, we're going to see a not a huge Uber advantage, like a 20% Uber advantage on Dave at the moment. Sam's up on the defensive sniper, but no other off classes. So if uh, Jasmine pushed this on the dot, then they might be able to catch out Sean. He was the later death, they should know about this uber disadvantage, but uh, Sam is going to get uh, get Geo as they do uber in through main, and they're going straight to the point here. Oh Zeno God. are really, really spread out. They don't seem to be like aware of this uber advantage at all. Redcoat playing in sneaky, but uh, Paulson's going to be the one getting all the frags here, locking down the spawn and the point. That's sloppy from Zeno. They should have known that they had that uber disadvantage. Absolutely, and also they had no nothing on the point either, so as soon as the scout got on the point and the Uber was taken off of him, he got so much time capped out there before he even got contested and he was forced to be reflashed, so yeah, just very sloppy going into this other mid, and it looks like Redco is going to get jumped by Hertz once again, very aggressively, neither one really commits fully here, but we definitely see that Paulson is in a better position as a demo man, right? He just uh, can do so much splash damage, but Hertz is going to be the first one to go down, and now it's going to see just the rest of the team search forward here for Sino, as so they actually do get this nice scout pick to see the demo man in Redco, he's in so far, and Paulson is now trapped in, and can he get out? No, he tries his best, but he will not be able to get it. And Dave has actually survived where Sean did not. And uh, looks like it might be another case of Jasmine team be able to recap mid here off of uh, just a really nice retreat. Yeah, Geo got in unseen and hit a really nice headshot rocket onto Sean to take him down there. No chance of surfing that one. He just went straight into the ground. As we are going to see a pause, I believe, as Jasmine are going to be retaking this with full uber advantage. I want to give some props to Sam for that mid. He played the uh, he played the shark roll. He was just sort of scooting around underneath the point, finding things below there. He uh, managed to take down the Hertz, who was the initial aggressor for Jasmine. And then uh, oh, this isn't a pause. Oh, okay. oh, is this another one of those weird lags? Like, we saw that uh, on the other one, but at least it would say like in the corner that it was kind of disconnected, you know? And uh, we don't see that now, so it's a bit weird. Hopefully we don't get like a massive time skip, because I want to watch some TF2. I, I don't want to just talk about it. So I'm just going to assume that uh, VTooth is wrong, which is not a smart proposition, to be honest, but I'm just going to go with this is definitely a pause and hope I'm right. All right, so we, we've been told now that there's a pause type thing. Something very strange has happened, but uh, hopefully we'll be underway relatively quickly here. Uh, yeah, 
2 0 to Jasmine so far, Beta, but I feel like Zeno have very much been in this. They've had their opportunities. Uh, they obviously were pushing on to last at the very beginning of the match here so far. Uh, what do you think that they need to turn around to start capitalizing on these rounds? I think the first step is to just count Ubers really diligently, right? There's been a couple of times where the positioning has not been the absolute best with the very, these very close Uber situations, so. At this point, they should definitely realize that Jasmine T are willing to push on these very small Uber advantages. And then at the same time, I also think they should probably cut down on their non-Uber pushes. You know, there was the time when they were up two people and they were pushing into last and then the spawners came in. Right? And that's a, that's a pretty risky play. I was talking about how I thought they were going to do a suicide by putting some pressure on and then getting a soldier into the face of them or something, right? But they actually just pushed off of it which uh, kind of caught me by surprise. And I think it was actually a mistake. I think they need to just play it a little bit more safe in a lot of situations and just play off of the, the small events that they definitely have instead of trying to take these big DM fights and just really get complicated with it. I think they just don't have quite have the DM of Jasmine T. So just uh, playing uh, the Uber advantage is smart and playing the man advantage is, uh, in a more clever way is uh, the way forward. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. I think that's a way that uh, Zeno really feel comfortable playing, and it's a way that works really, really well uh, on a team with Doge on it as well, because he is just able to hit so many pipes, and so getting into those sort of um, chaos, like chaos situations where it is DM flex is... Uh, it's good for a player like Doge, but Redcoat might not excel so much in those situations and obviously isn't as accustomed to doing them with a team like this, not being the core, as we've said a few times before. So uh, it'll be interesting. I I do agree with you that they need to sort of be a little bit more diligent with their advantages, and I think that some sloppy capitalization on that and sort of not really... I don't know. They're not playing chess. They're not. They're not counting what pieces they have and what pieces the other team don't have. So, like for that uh, two-player advantage that you said, they did still have the sniper on the field. So they need to uh, be aware that they are technically a combat class down until Sam starts hitting some shots and probably play off that. They can send a sack. They can just start peeking really aggressively and get Sam involved. But yeah, uh, missed opportunity there and uh, some. Just some sloppiness, which cost them a couple of rounds. I think that they're very much still in this match here, but um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see going forward, and hopefully this pause doesn't last too much longer. Apparently Dave's power's cut. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's always uh, pretty nerve-wracking when it's your medic that drops. Like, losing a scout or a soldier or whatever is not that important, but a scout <laughs> or no, uh, like a demo man or a medic is not something you want to have drop, especially the medic, because that can mean, like, uber advantage just stuff just disappearing into thin air. Hopefully it wasn't uh, that crucial of a situation, but we will see. So another thing that I have also noticed is that um, we have these big chaotic fights happen quite a lot, and obviously a mid-fight fits that build pretty well, so it's a pretty good example to use. But it's not just the mid-fights where this happens, but what will often happen is there's this big fight, and then things are going pretty well for Sino, and then at some point a single soldier or a scout will sneak their way in and pick off the medic. And I, I think, you know, they need to be a little bit better at playing around their medic and make sure that that doesn't happen and just, like, better track everyone. But more importantly, then once that happens and they, they lose their medic, they go on this really big offensive and trying to take down the enemy medic in Dave, and they're just not able to get them. And then they bleed, like, two or three more players, and then it's a really easy recap coming in from Jasmine T. All right, so that has happened. Those kind of situations has also happened a lot. So it's just protecting your medic better in, in the end of fights. So just focusing on that more and, and then focus less on chasing and getting kills elsewhere because that has not been working out nearly as well for them. So that's like another thing. And let's actually look at look at the little sneaky sticky trap uh, from Redcoat uh, on this middle. I don't know if you see it, it's like underneath the Oh middle. yeah, on the on the, the lip around the uh the lip around the nip, as they say. I'm sure that someone said that in some context before. That's an interesting one. I don't know if it'll get anyone that's standing above it or if it's intended for people who fall off the point. It's uh, that's a that's an interesting one there. Um, yeah, I I think to sort of to keep on with what you were saying, it works. Uh, playing that cleanup role is what Arshaw was doing really, really well in the previous map, and we saw that 
he top damaged in the server and it's a role that he's very comfortable playing. So that's a strength they should probably play to. And one that they should recognize is sort of, that's one of their main strengths now that Doge isn't here. Uh, it, it does suck that you do need to make those sort of, those consolations for uh, not having a core player here for the grand final. It's, it is really a shame, but Arshaw is just, he had a very, very large game while sort of flying onto the radar in the first map. So if they can play into his hands, as well as get Sam involved because as we've seen he's been popping off on Sniper which he's up currently on in the moment in the game and uh, as well as on Scout he's doing a lot of damage and he's really really putting some damage into the flank and uh, getting into some worrisome places as far as Jasmine T are concerned so playing that Scout game will probably favour Zeno more going forward uh, especially since Elmo plays a very disconnected scout role. So I think it'll be good as, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting going forward. I hope that they unpause though soon. I'm going to try- see if I can get one of the players from the teams on the line here because this is getting a little bit silly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a TF2 final without some sort of big pause, unfortunately. But actually, yeah, I want to hear, this is a complete... Uh, non secret. Oh, Never mind. Christ. We're just going to wait. So we are actually live again. Will a sneaky trap do 61 damage? Okay. It almost worked, but not quite. It's going to be an easy recap here for Jasmine T. Uh, yep, I'm going to quickly retry to the server to get my hard work here again if you want to keep going, Beta. But Sam is going to find a pick there on the sniper class that I hear. Yeah, that's going to probably be the only thing. He's uh, pretty far back. It's a big door push here, and Paulson actually takes a lot of damage, so this might be enough. And Paulson actually gets taken down by Paulson, who came in through the lower shot of door there. Uh, just saw his opportunity and got in really well. Like, I think every single person from Xeno uh, are actually on the high ground, or was, and uh, that was pretty funny to see. That can actually get uh, spammed out pretty well. Sam's got an angle Paulson. onto Dave, but they're going to back up into the choke here. It's actually, this is interesting. They've actually wrapped around the other side, have um, have Xeno, Sam and Ash, Ash are going to get hurt, Redcoat's going to go down, Ubers are going to be traded out here, as Sean did get his Uber through all of that, Sam is still taking an angle, Paulson is going to trade for Arshaw, so that's a really, really good frag there. Sam needs to get involved though if they want to stay the course of this mid, uh, do, but Zeno are not going to be able to do it. That said, there's a collapse coming into the choke, Sam's going to get Cookie, almost going to go down to Varna. Uh, Geo is pressuring Sam back, but he's got Vana with him at the moment, and we're probably going to be seeing a recontest with the heals here uh, from Zeno. Vana's going to isolate Geo up in that uh, up in that river area, and they're going to be taking it into mid through uh, through Big Door as we are going to see the pause uh, happen in real time and then unhappen. So that's going to mean that whatever Uber play was, it's now it would vanish for Sean, as Dave was the one that dropped out. But uh, Cookie's going to say, enough is enough, Sam. Get on the counter snipe and snipe Sam out of the game. Yeah, that's always a really good move when the enemy has a sniper, you can just go snipe yourself. And if they don't realize, they're just going to be standing completely still and not really worry about it. And then you can just snipe him with ease, and that's what he did. So of course now they know there's a sniper, and this is a really annoying situation because they have to push into a sniper with an Uber Advances. There's a soldier on the medic as well, pops it into the air. He actually pops it there in midair while looking at him, so it's a bit of a weird pop, but um, some players would have definitely held on to that, but he stays safe. So uh, good news here there for Sean is that he will not die uh, to an air shot today or anything, but he probably didn't need to use that. But Oh well, they do still get second. They are... We are in this situation where it's very difficult, and wow, they're just going to move in here without an Uber. And there we go, the Uber force comes out, but Sean is in so deep, he actually does manage to get out because of some time on the point, but that was very risky. Yeah, it was, and it was, if it wasn't for some very, uh, like you said, well-timed pressure on the point there, Sean probably would have been caught out in River, uh, definitely overstaying his welcome. Interesting play there by Zeno, but it works out in the end, as they're going to be up on a 40% Uber advantage to push on to last here. Their last last push attempt didn't go so crash hot, so we'll see if they're able to improve it this time. Looks like they're going to be coming from the River area, but uh, Jasmine are going to be copying the last hold that... Uh, Zeno did earlier, but with some slight changes, that's a very interesting gun spot, sort of in the in the bottom, not secret part of secret. It's going to get seen very easily. It's only a level one. Cookie's up on the pyro as well. He's going to get taken down very low and then finished off by the red coat stickies. Paulson playing in the water here, a very strong position to defend the point. Uh, Geo and Hertz all actually in water, so that's going to. Dave has been taken down. 
that's going to leave the, um, but all of those players sort of looping around, both soldiers and the demo man were playing underneath and through the river area for Jasmine, and that meant that Paws was just able to get straight onto Paulson by just going through the tube and getting onto the point there, so that's going to be a round on the board for uh, Zeno after the long pause, 13 minutes and change left to play here, Beta, as we're on to mid number four. Yeah, Jabati, they didn't look uh, quite prepared for that. There's a soldier in the drop down, Hertz, who was at least thinking about it. Looks like he will decide not to. But you, it's destroyed by Sam as he tries to jump in. But Paws has been taken down as well. So Roma's doing their Roma thing. Soldier's in behind it. Hertz actually gets the medic. Nice loop to loop around there. But there's a lot of counter aggression coming in here. Paulson looks like he's going to get taken down somehow, dying super late. But now the medic's going to get chased down as well. And this is looking extremely good right now for um, uh, for Zeno, even though they did lose their medic as well. Uh, overall, a pretty decent mid. Uh, yeah, it is, but uh, Sean is going to be up before Dave as well. There's a little bit of chaos. Hertz was the one to take down Sean on that mid, and he was left alone behind, but he not able to get anything while he was back there. Cookie's up on the sniper, so he's going to be taking an angle on a second here through the river area, seeing if he can catch out Sean or anyone from Zeno. Uh, they're Looking to go through the big door at the moment, but Paws has come through the choke and he has called Cookie there at the moment, so I expect to see him get pressured momentarily. But Varna's actually the one who I imagine would pressure him, but he's come in through lower, lower behind. Sean he's able to get Dave again. But Cookie by gets Cookie. taken down by. Sh um, sh sh uh, Cookie takes down Sean, rather. Uh, chaos there. But yeah, Varna's decision not to pressure the sniper and to go for the med ends up costing both teams their medic. And the cleanup kills all fall in favor of Jasmine there. So interesting decision. Aisha is the only one left alive. He's going to get body shot by Cookie. And they're going to be able to retake second here. Uh, Jasmine T. It's a rough time to be a medic, I tell you. They're just getting picked off so much. And Cookie, he's uh, looking like he's going to be a sniper duel with Sam. But Sam just walks in there. I don't think Cookie was looking for that. And Elmo as well is like setting up a sneaky sentry gun, but not so sneaky when they see you do it but he's gonna have to walk all the way back to spawn before he can do anything helpful and two soldiers will jump in and get Paulson Paulson did not expect that at all he just came in to choke Tio will pick off Vana and he's very weak here a single arrow will save him though and Sam gets another pick here so we'll see the Roma special yep we will Good times. Uh, the only reason that Roman special happened though was because Dave recommitted through Shutter to um oh nice shot there by our uh, Sam, but uh, Dave recommitted to Arrow Geo so that he was able to live a bit longer on second. Redcoat's going to own Paulson and that's going to be a second round. But that um but Dave committing to Arrow Geo there was what got him taken down and that's what made all the frags eventually fall for Zeno there as we've got a tied game all of a sudden. Beto, maybe it was just a a big long tack. Someone yanked Dave's power cord out like I like uh, I think it was I fifty two. Mix up who yanks the power cords out for an entire station of PCs, but that's what they needed. They're back in this game. It's two all. Feels familiar. It's two two once again after an initial lead from Jasmine T. But Elmo is taken out by Paws immediately here, so that's going to be a lot of bombs that are being able to be denied. Hurt's going to go in behind. He did this last minute as well, but this time around he has been called, so he's going to have to just slither away. We do see the rest of Jasmine T just going in here, very nicely coordinated spam and jump in coming here eventually Tio does go down but it looks like it just has been enough a really well coordinated bomb in there from Jasmine T winning that mid for them yeah the pinch came in expertly from the soldiers of Geo and Hertz uh, Hertz on one side Geo on the other no, Sean doesn't know which way to look and needs rockets from both of them and they're all just sort of pressed up against that wall on their side of mid taking all that splash damage really well played there by Jasmine Pause is going to deny Hertz the luxury of doing the Roma thing, but uh, Elmo is going to avenge his fallen Roma. Hertz not happy <laughs> about that one in chat, but when is Hertz ever happy? Let's be real. Uh, Pyro and NG defense up again from Zeno. It worked well for them last time because they spent a lot of time trying to take down that uh, that gun, but uh, Aisha is actually going to move the gun. No, sorry, Sam is uh, at a very, Sam very strange time. He's, he's yeah, putting that's in the same bad. spot that Elmo did, but that's that's not going to work out for them. A lot of point time being played. Paulson's just able to get a lot of stickies on point, and I expect we'll see this go in the way of Jasmine momentarily. Yep. Uh, yeah, I don't understand the. I don't understand the rationale behind behind doing that sentry spot. Like. You, you want your sentry to be actually pretty far forward and then have a pyro in front of it because then there's like a ton of knockback and it's very difficult to get in. Like that's usually the way it, it is done, but yeah, that's just a sneaky sentry gun, but then you get caught out. So that does not work out at all. Here's Jasmine T. Soldiers both get kind of stuffed. Uh, 
But uh, eventually they do come in and this shot gets oh. taken out immediately. Damn. Oh, Geo just absolutely owning everyone there. That was a very badly failed right side mid coming out of Xeno. The big door rollout. Geo just counter jumped the elbow and rained down damage. Complete white from Xeno. Uh, Dave's still alive, full uber advantage, pause spawning up on the NG immediately, not a good mid there from Zeno, and especially since they've just gone down around, uh, it's like you were saying, shades of the previous map where they managed to equalize and then Jasmine managed to adjust and pull away. I expect we won't be seeing Aishao move the gun the same way Sam did. Sam's up on the pyro, the roles are reversed, clearly Aishao's the superior engineer. Um, yeah, never mind, I won't finish that <laughs> Absolutely. sentence. Yeah, this is uh, much better, and uh, I would actually like to see the gun being even further forward. This is something we've seen Seven do lately, where they put the gun almost like at the pillar on the left side, because then it will push it back, but uh, the scuba gun the scuba comes in from the right side, so that doesn't matter. So the sentry gun actually uh, tanks quite a lot of damage, this, the pyro doesn't die either, and the, on the point it was Elmo, but he doesn't quite die either. Geo comes in though, does a lot of damage, but he gets taken down as well. This is actually looking like a pretty good hole, but Sean goes down at the very tail end of that whole push, and Paulson is still alive. That's a pretty scary thing, and Dave's going to be the only one alive to get out there. So a failed push, but they do get the medic, but I think there will it will be a recap here for Zeno. <laughs> What is that shit talk from Elmo? What does that even mean? <laughs> Elmo yeah, I, I love. <laughs> yeah, he just said something really terrible. That something really weird in the boss goes, what the fuck, man? It's like, owned. <laughs> Nobody Elmo, knows what's going on there. Elmo's salty, but that's Elmo's default state of being. I wouldn't read too much into that. Sam's up on the sniper here. Dave is on the 30% Uber advantage, and they know that do Zeno. That's why they got the defensive positioning and the defensive Sam sniper. We'll see if he can recreate any of Cookie's uh, River Sniper heroics, but it looks like Jasmine are going to be taking this in through Big Door and not really giving Sam much of a sightline. They're really playing this around the baby door area, looking to take it in aggressively, but Sean's getting very, very close to his Uber, and he's also positioned himself quite well on the stairs there, so I think we're going to see a contest coming out. That said, Pause does get taken down, and I think Sam's going to get isolated in River as well, but um, no, he manages to squeak away from Hertz. Sean's going to be up Random on his Uber for last, but they're actually going to trade really, really aggressively. Geo gets dropped in that Uber. That's a shame from Dave. Geo won't be happy about that one. The uh, collapse is coming in. Oh, Paulson destroys Aisha though when the collapse tried to come in from Xeno in the lobby area. Uh, I expect we'll be seeing a reset here, but Jasmine are going to want to push off that one player advantage that they have, and they've managed to make it into a double oh, one. is going to be coming in late now through water, and he's going to rain down damage onto the point. A bit of an overextension there post Uber from Xeno is going to get them caught with their pants down, and that's going to be 4-2 Jasmine on this map. It's exactly the same story that we saw on the last map, Beater. It's pretty much point for point. There's even six minutes remaining in this situation. I think there's slightly less points. I think there was like 5-2 at this point in the game. So this is still much more possible than for Cena, but they need to get their go on. As I say, they immediately lose some both Romo's on both teams, so Romo's doing their thing. Dio's going to jump in very aggressively. He gets taken down early, but he does trade their Ridvana, so both soldiers going down. And uh, oh my god, nice pipe there from Redcoat. That's going to completely change things as Dave goes down. It's just now a single person defending the medic. Can Sean survive? Nope. The two scouts in the face. There's going to be too much. A demo man against two scouts. You know, you mentioned the nightmares. The nightmares continue. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what's less balanced than the scout class is two scout classes holding hands. That was, uh, Sean was just, uh, it was a nice pipe there from Redcoat to take down Dave, but Sean was unfortunately just caught a little bit too close in there and wasn't able to squeak out once they managed to get themselves the med advantage. It's going to be even Ubers here, but uh, Xeno are, are really, really tentative to defend this Spire. Uh, Aisha was actually up on Engineer for a while, expecting it to be a last hold. I think that they probably should have contested, but they've almost decided that too late now, and Paulson's just able to trash the Xeno combo. I think they probably, like, it was the right decision made at the wrong time there from Xeno, and now there's just a bunch of low health players left on the field. Hertz and Geo are going to get a clean-up kill each. And uh, Sam's left in, he's going to float Geo, but Geo's going to take him down uh, in the end there. They're probably just stalling for time at this point. Dave has full uber advantage. Uh, spawns won't be up entirely for this last defense by Xeno. Uh, yeah, ill-advised second contest there, and we're going to be seeing Jasmine push in with a full uber advantage. Yeah, sometimes a bad decision 
that you commit to is better than a good decision that you don't commit to. And that's a perfect example of that, because I, I really do think you're, you're right that that was uh, the right move. It was just they waddled around a little bit too much. They weren't aggressive enough uh, at securing the choke, and now we're going to see this full uber advances coming in here. Uh, things are getting juggled quite a bit. There's a sentry gun that's not going to die yet. There's a pyro's pulling everything back. There's even a heavy in big door here. So he's not going to be able to get in very easily. And Sam does go down to Paulson, but Paulson is now very weak, and Gio has uh, Elmo's on his main. Elmo's on his main. He's playing the cleanup heavy, but he gets taken down very low by red coat. Uh, Although the famous X Highlander main heavy. Hertz is going to actually come in. He's going to play to the point, but uh, he and Paulson are both going to get taken down in unison there. So that's going to cue the push out from, uh, from Zeno. Sean is up on his Uber, uh, and all of the players of Jasmine are in front. They're just able to squeak out the Uber advantage, but they're going to need to keep rolling this uh, Zeno if they want to get back in this game because they need to make this uber advantage count only three minutes left and two rounds down uber's going to be popped in through choke geo gets that force but they're not going to be able to find anything dave's actually isolated though he surfed down onto the ground unfortunately and gets caught out so that uber charge is going uber charge advantage is going to continue for xeno geo's behind but he's been splashed by a rocket that's heads up play there by pause Scout um, on the cookies medic. in okay. not quite going to get anything and Geo and Paulson are both super low and not able to make a play here on second. Elmo's getting caught out on the sniper too. I don't understand how Geo survived that. He just literally walked into an Uber and then just walked past it and everyone else was just like, ah, we want the medic instead. So he just survived and he's actually still behind line, but uh, he's going to get taken down by Vana. They will not do the Roma special because these guys, one of them at least was a pocket, so you don't do that. But anyway, the demo man's actually in super aggressive here. Red Coat is doing so much work and actually Ooh, they're just going to win the DM fight. Wow, this is what I said they shouldn't do earlier, and then they did it, and they're coming back, but they do need to take some chances, so they have two and a half minutes to gain this last round to take it into overtime, and they are definitely in a situation where they can do this. Also, the wall stuff from Zeno there, not res not acknowledging the fact that they had an Uber advantage and just going, yep, we have the player advantage, we have the players, we'll back ourselves to take this point here, because all um, every second matters at this point. We're going to see uh, both demos playing their respective sides. Hearth sort of playing around underneath while most of Zeno is taking the high ground at the moment. Geo is going to bomb for aggressively and Hertz is going to bomb in unison with him. Shorten's going to get mulched immediately with all that aggression coming forward and it's looking like a Jasmine mid as yeah every single frag is just going to fall. Aishao actually is going to try and clutch it out. He manages to get pulled. He's managed to get Cookie as well and takes a massive a chunk out of Elmo's stomach as well but isn't able to do anything. That was nearly extremely crazy from Aishao. Really really hitting a lot of stuff there but the double soldier bomb just was perfectly timed and perfectly coordinated with Paulson's aggression on that mid. Geo's up words on the side, Dave's on the uber advantage, sorry, yeah. Yeah, words cannot describe how much behind a wall Cookie was on my screen. Like, I was Edge literally... Ping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, that was crazy. Like, normally, at least on STVs, works up, oh my god, what a surf from Sean, can he get out? Can he actually get out? What? That was oh crazy by Sean, that was sick. Oh, that makes He's me happy. Yeah, but the sword gun lasts now, and there's still a minute they're remaining, so actually we need to see some push going on, and he has gone down as well. Redcoat will go down to Elmo's melee weapon there. Yeah, they, they need to push here, but Cookie is uh, pressuring last, and he will actually get taken down, but Aishu, he's on point, he needs to be there. He's uh, doing quite a good job here against Elmo, and he will actually win it out eventually here. And now they have about 30 seconds to get all the way into last. That's going to be very difficult, but they're definitely going to try. See Sam just uh, pushing very aggressively, and Hurts actually gets taken down. Are they going to do this? Like, they're going to get mid for sure. Uh, how quickly did TCM do it all those years ago, Peter? I don't... That was 45 seconds from last to last. There we go, so it's still... Oh, it's possible. There's a century on second, but they had a heavy throwing. and born. No, that's not a throw. It's worked. <laughs> it worked. It worked. Yeah, I'll oh. give a scout. Wow. Prolander's defense on second coming out. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought, like, going NG would just be the worst thing. But no, no, they, they actually do manage to take it out. It denied, really the, it denied the bombers so well. That's like Elmo heavy in the forward spawn, so obviously you want to shut him out straight away, but there's little a little level one sentry just taking chunks out of you as you're trying to get forward. That ended up working really, really well. Uh, <laughs> very close map, though. That was a really, really exciting one, and it gives me hope going into Badlands, honestly, Beta. Uh, so that is going to be the second map to Jasmine. Uh, so they are leading the series two maps to nil in this best of five, so first to three. But uh, really, really close one. Uh, 
exciting map and we'll just check the logs i guess now <laughs> exciting stuff yeah i'm actually gonna go fix something real quick i'll be back in a moment but just talk about some logs and i'll be right back <laughs> all righty i can do logs uh Paulson and Redcoat uh, showing that it really, really is a demo man's map on Gully Wash. Top damaging each and uh, Paulson top fragging as well, actually. Uh, Elmo with a very, very strange stat line. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is bottom fa damage, second top frag. That's not something you see very often. He's also done his darndest to play as many classes as he can. So Elmo playing the, I guess you'd call that a cleanup role there. He's chip shotting everything. Scout's a good class, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of those damage numbers look relatively low due to the significantly uh, significant amount of time that that pause went on for. So that's that's probably going to attribute to that. But yeah, still a very strange stat line. Uh, one thing that I do want to draw attention to though is Sean's death stats are not stellar. This map he played really really well on log jam, only eleven deaths, but eighteen this uh, this time is not great. That's more deaths than uh, Paulson and Redcoat and uh, Ishao actually is pocket scout. So. Uh, he had some six surfs there, and it's probably because his team was playing an extremely balls to the wall style. But he's, um, yeah, not surviving a lot of those engagements. So that's a bit of a shame to see. Uh, as we are going to pro lands, are you back yet, Beta? No, he's not. All right. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I had some. That was actually perfect timing. I had a guy arrive with some hardware and stuff. So cool, cool. I just had to go answer the door. So good times. Yep. Yeah, uh, we're off to Proland, Peter. Uh, for those of you who might be American in the chat or might not have been paying attention so far, we're actually playing Proland's B6. Uh, this version of the map has the, the fun little addition of having the old Badlands last cap time, which we touched on a bit in pregame, but... Uh, I think there's going to be some strats coming out. I, I heard uh, a little birdie told me that Jasmine might have a strat for this beat, or I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that as well, because, I mean, I think every team has some strats for this. And one of the reasons why I actually like the fact that they reverted the, the cap point is that when you have strats for this, like, you're, you're going to cap it, like, a very high percentage of the time. So, like, I think every team has strats, but... Like, I'm hoping it's going to be, like, especially spicy, but I played... I'm kind of old school these days, I, I'd guess. And I played a lot on this map when the, the cap time was really fast. So I've seen a lot of different strategies. And, you know, we, we have this in ETF 12 as well. So we've also seen a lot of weird strategies going on. So have, have, are you just more creative in Australia? Is, is the weird gravity on the other side of the earth just better for creativity? I don't know. No, I think just um, West Australians have brain damage, so Paulson's just come up with something that no one would have <laughs> thought of. But, um, yeah, for better or worse, we'll see it. I'm very curious. He's teased this going into the game. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it. It's an interesting map. Uh, Badlands, it used to be described as the dust two of TF2 maps, but it has really fallen out of vogue in recent times, especially... Uh, in the more scout dominant meta, just some of the geometry doesn't suit scouts so well, and it's a it's an awkward one. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how it played though, because for those of you who have been following Oz Fortress for a good long time, will remember that Jasmine used to be fucking awful at this. They um, back in the Brutalix era, just before I58, Jasmine could not get around against Ego uh, on this map. Even when they were very, very well ma uh, closely matched on every other map, it was just Brutalix, Paulson, Geo, the powers that be, the brains that were, could not wrap their head around Badlands. So uh, historically, a weaker map for them, but uh, I wouldn't go so far as to compare Zeno to Ego. So it'll be interesting to see what they do here. And almost it's a shame this map more than others that we're not going to be able to see Doge because he was famously slow with his rollouts and hit a lot of stuff on this mid being the MGE mid. So yeah, hmm. what are you going to be looking for, Beta? So in the very first thing that I will look for is definitely the demos on the middle because this is a middle that Demoman can very much just dominate. It's a... Uh, 
And Gollywash is kind of like that too, but Badlands is a little less straightforward, right? Like sometimes you can just trap people in house, sometimes you can do a ton of damage on the slope. It's not that uh, obvious, whereas in Gollywash it's always Victor. Uh, you can just spam out. And we didn't see too much of that last map, but uh, Badlands is just one of those maps where if you're a demo man and the enemy demo man is either slow or maybe he's playing balcony and he's not really hitting you because he can't see you, and you just walk across the point really aggressively, sometimes you can just murder everything and just win the middle on your own. So that will be the first thing that I'll be looking for. Um, uh, do, do you have anything that you, you're going to keep your eye on? Uh... I don't know. I, I'm one thing that I used to do as uh, as a roamer on this map a lot was I used to enjoy the choke roll out going to mid and you do the pogo across your own train and uh, if you timed it well, which was pretty easy to do honestly, you just do r normal rocket jumps. You'd often uh, coincide your pogo with the med walking up slope and you'd catch him. So that's something I, I expect I'd to see Paws do it. Honestly, I've seen him do it before, so that'd be something that's a bit of fun. Uh, this map. Also, another one that uh, has some long sniper sightlines on second, so we're probably going to be seeing a bit of that too. So, uh, sorry, what was that weird? Alrighty, so we're going to be going live momentarily. Do you have any predictions, Peter, or are you going to chicken out again? No, no, I, I've seen a whole two maps from Jasmine T now this season, so, so I'm good. I'm basically an expert at this point. So, so I'm going to go ahead and say that it's going to be... Uh, Jasmine T, you're going to go ahead 2-0, to zero and then... We're going to see Cena come back 2-2, two to two, and then it's going to end up with a 5-2 to two victory for Jasmine T. That, that just seems like a general trend that I have observed. Woo! Big pregame air shot there from her. Yeah, I saw it as well. Um, all right. Well, you're wrong. It's going to be 5 0 as we are off to the first mid here on this third map of the Oz Fortress t Season 23 Premiership Division Grand Final, Xenophobia Phobia versus Jasmine T. Uh, we're going to be seeing both demos do the conventional rollout. No one's fallen down into Valley and has to sh suffer the walk of shame. Uh, Paulson taking some early aggression, but Hurst is actually going to jump into the uh, Xeno house. Paulson's going to do the exact same thing, actually. Both teams jumping behind, but Varden's going to find Dave immediately, but Sean's going to go down immediate, uh, immediately as well. Both meds go down extremely early into that mid fight, and the collapse just comes out onto the uh, remaining player's wall. <laughs> Sam tries to get up there, but I think he ate three scatter shots and a projectile to the face trying to get there, and Xeno are going to wipe on that first mid, but importantly, Dave did die. Yeah, Hertz is pretty far forward here, so he might be able to get some sort of uh, med pick off. I, I assume that's what he's going for, and he is actually behind the medic, and I don't think anyone really sees it coming, and uh, I was wrong as uh, Hertz just get uh, destroyed by everyone else. Spire has come down, but it looks like it's going to be definitely a contest here. Geo's in the skybox. He's not going to be able to get out alive. Aishu will take him down. Jack and T, they're fighting it really aggressively, even though I don't think they have quite enough heals, and, and uh, it looks like I'm also wrong, as they do eventually manage to get this, and the fact that you have Spire is uh, just so important in these kind of fights because Spire caps pretty slowly, especially compared to the first map that we saw. And this time around, it's just going to be a no single point. star point, and they blink, and they missed it. <laughs> what a map, says Elmo. Uh, <laughs> the good old bad lines. Yep, that's going to be the first round there. You've got to be hyper vigilant these days. A lot of people have uh, become accustomed to the slower cap speed. I think you've had it too good for too long, but now you've got to really pay attention to that point while defending last. On the mid number two here, Redco going to be rolling out window, Paulson going to be rolling out on the train side. Uh, again, early aggression, jumping behind from Hertz. Varn is going to get owned on his own train. Geo's going to get popped up on the air. Uh, he's going to get taken down eventually, but Hertz is going to come in from behind and absolutely uh, clap the rest of the Xeno combo there. Just again, that sort of earlier soldier aggression, and they're getting better positioning on the high ground on these mid speed. Uh, it's, they really need to do something about that, start playing like some counter jump bad lanes mid or something, Beta. It really looked like uh, an other mids we've seen so far where it just it initially goes to Jasmine T pretty heavily, but then the two scouts come in and just do a ton of work and almost clean up. I couldn't quite clean up there, and that made I really noticed Geo just did a million what? damage. And what red coat? What was that sticky on Was that a prediction sticky? That was sick. I, yeah, I think it might have been. I, that, that was nuts. I, I don't understand. Like, that's some serious math brain stickies going on, but uh, can you also predict the fact that Elmo has gone spy? Um, we will see. It looks like the answer is no, <laughs> but uh, Elmo just fails anyway. Alrighty then. And yep. uh, that's gonna <laughs> be a little gift. <laughs> yeah, I hate this game. Yep, that's spy for you. 
Yep, Sam, uh, Sam's going to be able to sniff him out there. He probably had his Elmo gimmick sense tingling. Uh, two players down. They're going to be able to force Jasmine out of this mid pretty comfortably as Eno. Uh, slight over advantage here on Dave, but I don't think it's one of those ones that they're going to know about, so they're not going to be feeling themselves to a recontest here. Geo's still down, so if uh, Zeno want to get something going, now's the time, but their hold is pretty well set up on this second point here. Uh, is Jasmine... Sam's actually gone behind, but he's going to get taken down by rolling out Geo. That's a... That's some bad luck, Sam. Uh, it was a good play to get in through the drop down, but Geo up on the respawner. So we're probably going to see oh, what Hertz Jasmine get done here. Box. Hertz and Geo are in. Uh, Hertz is going to get tonight. Big surf into the choke by Sean, but uh, Sean, knowing where he was going to land there, and Paulson had a carpet of stickies waiting to greet him, is going to pop that Uber off. Two soldiers down, though, for... Uh, for Zeno, which, for, sorry, for Jasmine, which means it's going to be difficult to contest the Spire on that high ground. Full Uber advantage for Dave, but they're going to cap up on second. Uh, Zeno. Deciding not to contest Spire there at all, despite having an Uber advantage and a demo man. Uh, I think that's probably a smart move. They didn't have that many players, and Paulson probably didn't have everything loaded, if I just had to guess. But now they're just going to move out here. They still have the Uber advantage, and Vana's not going to be able to go out of there in time. And uh, so far, the, the trades are coming in pretty well here. Pause is going to jump the medic. And uh, the medic actually taking the 1v1. Oh, the Roma special. That was the most special Roma special I've seen so far. <laughs> Pause hits two massive upwards directs onto, onto Hertz, who was hiding in the uh, in the shoot. He knew he was there, but Hertz shoots downwards in the, that direction and trades him out. Very nearly fat there by Pause. Um, Sam's up on the sniper. He's not going to go to the. Uh, he's not going to go to the Pablo spot just below the. Sh um, just below the window, which sort of which disappoints me. Redcoat's actually going to get taken down by Cookie though, away from the plane. That's going to really open up second here, as if it wasn't open enough and ready. Paulson's going to get taken down by Sam though, but Dave still has a full Uber charge. Pauses in behind the medic. He's going to just find him there and. Okay, do 112, and there we go. He's going to get the four stars. A nice play by him, and I'm not quite sure how he managed to get behind there, but, you know, it was initially looking really bad for Zeno because they lost the Demo Man, and Demo Man is just their key class to hold Spire, but it works out in the end because they get a really nice force out. They didn't really commit a whole lot to do it, and then they also get a ton of picks away from the, the Uber as well. So really nice hold there. There's going to be another recap, and so far this has just been back and forth. Both teams just messing up and then just getting pushed back and forward. And Almost it looks having like a second crack at the spy class. He says, Geo, anything you can do, I can do better, even if it takes me a couple of attempts. I show and Geo are going to trade out and choke, because it looks like Zeno are going to try and bust in here. Uh, Elmo is going to get taken down by four. Perfectly predicted. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Elmo, I'm just waiting to see something pop up in chat, but he's, he's not having a good run of things on Spy at the moment. Still a big Uber advantage here for Sean, and two-player advantage, so they're going to need to get into the last relatively quickly here, otherwise Dave is going to get up on his Uber as the spawners come in here for Jasmine. The pyro is up, the infamous Badlands last pyro, where you just uh, spam mouse two and nothing can get through that goddamn doorway. Uh, but it is going to even out, and... We're probably Some just going to so He's not going to have too many reflects. <laughs> he's like, that can't be... Does he use view models? I wonder. Uh, a lot of people don't on Pyro. So maybe he's going to just reflect a couple of times and then go, oh, what happened here? And then he's just going to be out of ammo. That would be he's, pretty he's, funny. He's playing on the point, which is interesting. They're obviously extremely paranoid <laughs> about this. Uh, I show and Geo are going to find each other in main. Geo's going to get better. Oh, Dave goes down. Down. Red coat drops down. That was insane. Was that a demo sack into last? Sean's going to get forced up into top lobby, but they, um, uh, Elmo down, Dave down. Paulson's in spawn. Sticks have been cleared off point. Paws has, uh, jumped above the point. Paulson's trying to re-sticky it, but the clappers, uh, the, sorry, the recontest is coming in from the players who are everywhere. Redcoat oh, versus Paulson. Demo man supremacy on the line here. Dave is up. But oh my gonna, god, he actually Dave is going to, oh. All right, well, Paulson sucks and he has to get carried by his medic. Yeah, thank God Dave is a way better player than, than Paul's in there. The Zink's gonna be a single scout and a soldier actually going into last. The spawners are about to come in, but oh my get god. Dave. That's huge. Yeah, that is uh, huge. I don't know if Vana knew if he was going to um, if he was going to go for the medic or go for the point, and I think he probably just made the best of not quite knowing. Uh, shout outs to Jono in chat. Uh, another medic that's carried Paulson previously. Just <laughs> gonna <laughs> All right, that works out. It, uh, the Spire does go down there. They're going to get a recap, but looks like they're going to be re-recapped as uh, <laughs> yeah, Elmo just uh, didn't jump. 
I swear, I do this all the time on Scout, where I just jump out of a cliff, but it turns out I just barely stepped out over before I jumped, and so I don't have a second jump, and I just die like an idiot. <laughs> that, that can happen to the best players, apparently. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it all seems to be going wrong for Elmo, especially if you'd ask him. Geo's actually going to find Red Coat, who's probably a bit overextended there in the top lobby area. Pause is in a spot that is a spot on this map, so he's going to be able to get a beat onto Bats, and he's actually going to go through main. He's going to find Elmo and take that duel as the rest of Jasmine's combo are pushing out through trash. Elmo's going to get the better of that scout v soldier duel. Uh, Varna is contesting Paulson on Spire, who jumped up, but Aisho's come in behind. He's going to get clean up Dave. He might be able to clean up all three here. He's going to get Paulson, but Cookie's low health is just going to be able to pistol him down. Aisho, who is get, coming out with these clutch kills and even almost even clutch of Oh, no. Oh, Medic in the was... skybox alert, and he gets uh, pistol down there by Cookie, who's just an absolute terror. Um, <laughs> almost gets the 5k, but the pan is going to be too strong. Cookie did a really, really good job of playing the cleanup role there, and Sean's surf was actually perfectly timed as um, Redcoat's, Redcoat's, Redcoat's having an adventure, and he's going to get taken <laughs> down eventually by Elmo, but Elmo's going to get taken down by Asha. This is just chaos. Elmo's confused. I'm a bit confused. But yeah, it was Who's pushing for Sean. last again? I have no idea. We just. Oh, they so How'd they get Spire? What's going on? <laughs> During all of that, I. Uh, this is. I think, this is... I think someone must have. This is chaos. I shall and uh, Sam are going to push Geo back into his shot. Oh, no, Dave's alone with the scout. Again. Okay, barely get saved. Nice play. Yeah, it's Paulson's going to jump bit. up. Onto the spire. This is this is all sorts of things going down. Sam and Gio are going to trade out, um, and I think Zeno. We're going to return to the world that makes sense, as we're going to see a mid stalemate and probably a mid push from Jasmine Beater. Yeah, I think things are weird. Hertz is in the valley. He's getting ready to jump in, and the choke has been conquered here for for Jasmine T. And it looks like. Okay, Hertz would actually just get taken down there. Did, didn't quite focus the right players, and eventually there's going to be a single sort of pause doing his thing where he just jumps in alone, but he will actually have some support there as Vana will actually jump in and get Paulson. That's a really nice pickoff, and that's going to allow everyone else to walk forward, but Sean is kind of alone here. It's going to be a pop, and fortunately for them, there will be some respawners pretty soon here uh, coming up, so they're going to be jumping to mid. Uh, but Gio's now behind. That means that the retreat is just completely shut down. He's going to get taken out. And eventually, this very messy fight is going to just go to Jasmine T. Sam owns her under the point there while well, he was on very low health. This is an extremely scrappy mid fight. Uh, the Ubers traded that were really interesting. I want to uh, give some credit to Dave there, who hit a really, really nice midi arrow to save Paulson's life. But then Paulson managed to find a way to die anyway. So that's good effort there by Paulson, but the uh, net result of all of this chaos on mid is going to be Jasmine uh, capping up on the Spire and with a 50% uber advantage. Aishao's up on the Engineer. No Pyro, uh, funnily enough, he, considering how strong it is on this last. Paws and Hurts are going to die, but it's not a Roma special. Uh, Varna's going to sneak into the Reese up. Uh, so Engie's up. Aishao's actually building on the ground here, so this gun isn't going to get up relatively quick, isn't going to get up super quickly, and he's not going to be in a position to build it, really. But I think its main purpose there is to watch the point as they're going to Uber into the Sam Pyro. Sam's going to get taken down, just not quite timing his air blast to section, and then Cookie's oh just going to play the point. Like and they were it, even watching it and going down on it. It just capped so fast that it didn't even matter. It's yeah. insane. Scouts rule the game these days, it's unfortunate. It's going to make things a bit easier for them, you know? Yeah, so the first part of my prediction so far for this game is, has come true. It's 2-0, to zero, so now we just need to see the comeback out of Zeno uh, you know, here. So Hirsch does a pretty nice jump in there. He's on the enemy train immediately. But uh, a lot of players getting caught here on the... <laughs> oh my god, Paulson actually going to crater here. As uh, Do or Vana is just up on this high ground here. It's going to really make things tough, but someone has just gone down. And Dave, once again, just being alive at the end of this mid, he's uh, thinking about running away. And it looks like he will eventually get out there. So the middle goes to Zeno, but the advantage goes to Jasmine T. And something we've seen a little bit so far in this uh, best of five beta is that uh, Dave's surviving a lot of those mids that uh, Zeno seemed to win. 
Uh, want to say like credit to Zeno there, much more structured and proactive mid with a double soldier bomb onto Jasmine's slope. Aishao is going to try and get some time onto uh, Spire, but it's going to get taken down. Sam is up on the spy. He's uh, said enough of this head clicking. It's far too easy for me. I'm going to go and try and stab some backs. He's hiding in the bush at the moment. So and Hertz is uh, not going to be hiding. He's on the medic, and there's even a scout on the medic. Wow, Elmo and Hertz just combining to take down the medic, and he's actually just going to be a full-on push. Sam is behind though. You know he is the spy, but he gets uh, taken down perfectly. Oh man, he's not a combat class. He's going to get taken down. And now everyone's just grouping around Dave, and that's a really nice play there coming out from Jasmine T. Yeah, a bit of an overextension from Sean to be able to get caught in there. Like, I feel like if you've got the spy, you should put all of your um, eggs in that spy basket realistically and play safe with the rest of your team. But uh, the big collapse came in on mid, and they didn't even get a force out of Dave during that mid fight. Uh, again, Dave milking these Ubers really, really well and baiting his team out perfectly so he doesn't have to uh, pop in disadvantageous positions. Hertz is going to go down to pause in lobby, but that's really not going to mean a great deal in the, um, in the scheme of this push. There's a lot of players like Ford holding at the moment, pseudo Ford hold coming out. Pause and Varna are going to go down, attempting to overstay their welcome. Noob is just going to come in th um, from Jasmine into the top lobby. They're going to take down the gun eventually, and almost all of uh, Zeno is dead now. Uh, Redcoat's going to face pipes Cookie, and that's going to be the round. I really, I think, a misguided Ford hold there from Zeno, not realizing that Jasmine was so quick to climb the spire. It was just a really disjointed top hold, you know? There was just there was no heal on them, there was no support. If you're gonna do a top hold, you're gonna all do it, right? And spam them out. But uh, as it is, it's gonna be three to zero in favor of Jasmine T here. As uh, Elmo's in very deep, but he will actually survive and it looks like a, it's gonna be a pretty good job here from Jasmine T to cleaning up, but the medic goes down in that whole process. And now all of a sudden it's the opposite direct. It goes in, but Cookie jumps in there. Sean had no real support there, only a single demo man. And that's kind of what we've been seeing there where, you know, you have the, the winning situation for them, Casino, but then they just go away from their medic and the single scout is just able to run in there and pick him off. So now it's going to be even Ubers-ish. They've actually spawned earlier. Going to have a small advantage. But that could have been a lot better, Casino. Yeah, it could have been. Like, the players looked like they weren't really in favor of Xeno there, but they were all so spread out across the mid, so Sean didn't have the adequate protection required when the, it was just him and his demo in Valley while the other players were up on the point or forward trying to clean up the remaining Jasmine frags, which let Cookie sort of just waltz on in and take Sean's life. Uh, slide over advantage for Dave on this second hold for... Um, for Jasmine, but it looks like there's a big resup play coming in. All of the players, uh, all of the combo players from Xeno have re um, come in through resup. Hertz is up in the drop down with Elmo, and they are behind the rest of the combo, and they are going to be able to uh, force the Uber out, but again, probably caught by their pants down uh, by not having Uber when Jasmine did that. Sorry, I'm started out that sentence. Hertz is going to wrap around back through mid. Pause is going to try and play salvage, but he's not going to be able to get anything. Dave taken down very low. Sam's still Sam's behind, on the getting back on the spire. Up. But yeah, there's a lot of players for Jasmine who are right there. Sam's going to deny Geo doing the scout class special, but I think he's probably going to get outcapped here. And yeah, Cookie takes him down. Scouts are pretty good at denying players, but he could not deny three players at the same time. He, he did a good job. He denied like two of them. But eventually, he just got pelted down. And that's going to be a recap. And another advantage here for Jasmine T. And I hope they don't just push on it again, because this has kind of been the mistake that both teams have made, where they just push in a little bit too early. And this also makes me nervous, because it doesn't look like Sean always counts the Ubers perfectly. Sam's so, going to be up on the sniper on bats as well. Well, that's a good sign that they are actually aware of what the situation is, that they have a Uber disadvantage. But they're actually contesting resupply pretty heavily, and they actually get a kill for it. Uh, trading one for one here is probably pretty good when uh, the Spire is there, and Hurt's going down as well. That's going to make Spire a lot more difficult to cap, and Dave has been forced as well. So overall, this has been a really good hold so far, but they're not quite done yet, and it looks like they've retreated really far back to a point where they're not even going to be able to contest Spire properly. Uh, yeah, Geoda is get taken down very low, just sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, peeking in the top of the lobby there, but yeah, it was almost a shame, like, they were so close to being able to recontest Spire there was Eno, but they were just not quite set up in the right position, almost floating around behind, it looks like he might, Sam might have a beat on him, and indeed he does, he's going for that last back cap, but he's not able to get it, Redcoat has- a Pyro going last, Oh, hurts Jesus on last Christ. with the Pyro. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. 
of poor Paul's, man. But what was he supposed to do? He didn't have a shotgun. This part was going to waltz into him, air blast him forever, and then the scout is even there as well to cap it out. That's... Oh man, how did the pirate that, get that far in though? Maybe that was the strat. That was a good strat. We'll give give credit where credit is due. There, there's not a great deal you can do about that. It's just interesting that the pirate managed to get in unseen at all. But uh, double soldier aggression net again coming out from Zeno here. Pause is going to get taken down. Trades out for Geo. Uh, but the point position is really really good for Zeno here, and Redcoat is just going to be able to clean up all the important kills. But again, Hertz just playing salvage, just coming in from behind. Able to get Sean and uh, I believe it was Varna was the other kill that he got. It's just Cookie left alive up against a low health scout who he's going to wow. find. And now all of a sudden this fight's in favor of him because Redcoat's got to hit the direct fight. And Cookie's going to clean up that kill as well. Well played by Cookie. recognizing Big played by Cookie. Yeah, recognizing his advantages and cleaning up well. That was basically like a 3v1 and he just cleaned them up one by one. I mean, it was really good of him to get the scout first. That's definitely who you want to kill in uh, those that kind of situation. Now the rest of the team is just going to swoop in and take it out very easily here. And uh, we are in the situation now where it's four to zero in favor of Jasmine T, and there's about eleven minutes remaining. So at some point we're going to have to see some really weird pushes, and that's only going to make it the situation worse. Zeno, but yeah, Elmo's in behind. He actually takes down the demo man. That means choke is just open. You can just go in there, but the sort of jumps in very aggressively. He's going to try to shut it down, and uh, there's even Cookie just continuing to clean up. So much damage being done by him. Yeah, and uh, there were low health there on um, on Jasmine. Hertz is actually on the bats, which might catch uh, Zeno out, but no, he's just going to do the team thing and cap up on Spire. Yeah, I almost wish I had committed a little bit more to that fight because he's a scout with a buff and he could have really done some damage and taken some, thinned out the numbers of the low health Jasmine players, but he he they respected the player advantage without sort of I don't know. You gotta oh, start, are we going to see the spicy play? Yourself. All right, the spicy play is coming out. Paulson's doing something. Oh, the, it's I born. see a he's tight two hundred health. Oh my, is he going to do it? Is he holding the door open for someone, or is he just being dramatic? <laughs> I, I, I hope they do it. I don't think they're going to. Oh, he, he's thinking about it. Aisha's going to get Elmo. Fino's going to do it. Uh, there's a little bit of chaos happening here. Paulson just... He, he's having an existential crisis here at the moment, but uh, the word is on the cheat feed that he's not going to do it, so I'm going to take my advent attention elsewhere, and yet he changes off it. That's a shame. Uh, Paulson's a loser. Uh, good force there by Sam on Spire. Manages to force Dave in a relatively awkward position. Sam's going to be trying to get the cap time on Spire now, and he's going to mince Hurts there, but Cookie's on a six kill streak. He's having a really, really good game, is Cookie. Going to take down Sam. It's, uh, Elmo's on last, actually. Elmo's gone last. He is going to be taking uh, the drill with pause. I, what? Well, why is he not That's BM. What, 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 what? Elmo? Yeah, they must want to do the the tie turner through the side strat, which is what I'm assuming. I am okay, so I'm just going to talk about that, even though there's like other stuff going on, right? So they want to do this uh, spicy strat, right? So what I think what they want to do is they have Paulson on the tie turner and the the pain train, and he's going to go in through the side and just like snake his way on through the point somehow. I'm not quite sure what the setup is, apart from that. But that, I think that's what we're going to see. That's going to be my guess, and it's going to be spicy. I want to see it too. So, yeah. sure. Speaking of spicy, Elmo's up on Spy, so let's find out how he dies, unfortunately, this time. He's going to walk up, and he's just going to leave. He's, he doesn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Elmo might be the worst Spy I've ever seen. Um, yeah, as Paul Wasn't was he a Highlander gonna, main? He was a Highlander heavy main, so he's not exactly a nuanced oh. player. But um, the Elm, the Jasmine are going to retake mid with their Uber advantage there. Hertz is up on Sniper, so it's a double pick class. Hertz is scoping in hard through the choke, and his red oh. going to walk right into that sideline. That's a really, really good shot there. So it's probably going to help. It sort of was in spy. behind the line. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, Elmo. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Gio just destroyed Rana. Just double air shots him. Just jumps into him and just gets him. Really nice shot there from him, but unfortunately his team is still in a pretty dire situation. I'm, I'm, luckily, Hertz actually gets a nice uh, snipe there onto him, and then Cookie just does his Cookie thing, where he just does a ton of damage onto a scout somehow, because apparently scouts aren't impossible to hit. He goes in there, and now the second scout's gonna go in, and that's Elmo. 
He's gonna clean up as well. It looks like this point's gonna eventually go to Jasmine T. Uh, I just want to sort of uh, take time out for a moment to uh, ask Weir to bring up the scoreboard. Cookie's on 90 points and there's still seven minutes left. He's going absolutely ham. He's having one hell of a game. Uh, it's going to be a matter of whether he can get to 100 points before Jasmine get the win difference, I imagine. I don't mean to be a, a naysayer, but that's what it looks like. Sam's up on the defensive sniper. Dave's up on a full uber advantage. Uh, they're really, really aggressive still. They're like on the grey bridge. Uh, Zeno, Varna's going to go down somewhere off on the flank. So that's two soldiers down for Zeno now. Sam is... Um, I don't know where Sam is. Actually, he's on side spire trying to get the force, but he's going to crater or something like that. Very strange. He was getting pressured by Cookie. Uh, Dave is making his way up Spire now. His team has capped up on that, and this is going to be an uber advantage oh, push for the game. The, Hertz is on Pyro flank. in top lobby. He's going to get taken down, but Elmo has actually manages to find the red coat frag, so if now was the time for Paulson to backspawner to be now, he's, he's, he's made his way back to the backspawn. He really wants to make this strat count. Ubers are going to even out, because Paulson really wants to do this. I'm keen, guys. Let's Let's see. I, I hope it fails miserably oh, that they extended too. the match for, just so they could do it, and that is just awful. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> that would be that'd be a thing of brilliance. Uh, Zeno's got a fort hold setting up though, so I don't know if they've uh, they have much in mind to counter the fort hold because you can't get into last with your bloody targe demo. Force is going to get taken down by Geo on the bat, so I imagine they're probably just going to trade Ubers here. I think that would be the play, given the circumstances that they're in. Paulson's walking his way up Spire, because he's got a bloody... Oh, he's, he's got to charge all the way in, like, past everyone. That would be a perfect way to break a forward hole, I'm pretty sure. Here comes the trade, though, on Geo. Uh, Ubers are going to be pretty much even. It's a trade on Dwyer Shao. Uh, this, um, Hertz is up on Spire fighting Varner at the moment. <laughs> Paulson... <laughs> Paulson sucks. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> That's everything I hoped it would be in less. It's beautiful. I couldn't have been uh, any more satisfyingly anticlimactic. That was that was beautiful. Dave's going to get taken down. Hertz is making his way to last. He's going to run into Paulus. They've been having a duel on this last point for what seems like the entire map. Elmo's on Spy coming in through main. He's he's too late to go to last. He's so bad at this class that it's actually staggering. Oh, he's going to no. stab <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, if we can bring up chat as well, Cookie has also pointed out that well in advance that Elmo was on Spire, because frankly, after the, his sorry showing today, <laughs> he doesn't deserve any any success on the off cliff. Paulson's going to do a drive by jumping in through Reese up and landing in choke. Paws and Geo are going to trade out. Uh, Elmo's on, no, Elmo's not on Spy. I suspect this is dead time. Elmo's gone, soldier. Uh, so this is probably going to be a, an FGG, as we say. I, I is think, on pyro. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure, like, Elmo, he's going to go soldier, right? And soldiers don't normally go spy. So when he switches to spy, it's going to be genuinely surprising. You know, I think that's the long con that they're playing right now. Um, yeah, but at the same time, is that not counteracted by the diminished surprise since he's already off classing? You know, you got you got to get philosophical about stuff like that. Uh, Uber's going to come out on Greybridge here. Uh, people are dying, stuff's getting shot. Uh, so I'll, I'll announce it now as it looks like Jasmine... Uh, no, sorry, this is, uh, Zeno are going to be making their way to make a round, but I don't know if this is just a long play to get Cookie up to his 100 points. He's on 97 at uh, just at this moment with three and a half minutes to go, but I think at this point, Peter, it is safe to say that uh, your Oz Fortress Season 23 uh, winners will be... Uh, will be Jasmine T, as we're going to see Paulson, he, he wants this Uber, he's taking it in through house here, uh, he's probably going to try and jump out, he sort of bobbles in, he's trying to chase Sean, he gets Sean, uh, med down there, so, but a uh, lot of players committing to this pack cap, Paulson's going to jump in and he's going to get denied pretty hard, they're trying to contest the Spire, nice pipe by Redcoat onto Elmo, Sam's going to get Dave, it's, it's it's just chaos at this point, Geo's on his new main, which is Scout, and he's probably happy to be there, but yeah, Paulson's, Paulson's going to jump up onto the Spire. A sneaky jump, that is just, oh my god, and then the air pipe on Trivana, that is just, 
pure gamer god material. That is just actual crazy. <laughs> he killed the scout with a sticky jump in through the door, and then he just air piped someone else. It's hard to uh, do some bio stuff. But yeah, we should probably mention, I completely forgot about this, but there's uh, normally there's going to be a bunch of like medals given out and awards and stuff um, at the end of the after the grand finals, but uh, this time around, uh, there's a possibility that there might be some sort of awards show going on. But uh, yeah, we'll do more about that. But let's just get back to the game. As Paulson's just going to jump in super aggressively in show. <laughs> gonna, oh, okay. He hits the pipes and craters for his devil gets chipped down by a scout. Jasmine White, but Paulson's just going for glory kills at the moment, and he's he's doing it gloriously. Cookie's made a hundred points, ladies and gentlemen. We did it, Reddit. But. Um, yeah, there we are, this is just dead time, but I don't know, it'd be cool to see an awards show, we haven't had anything like that in Oz Fortress for a very long time. <laughs> I should get yes. outplayed by the mini, and now this is on like... NG's, is this, this is, oh my god, he's, he's so good. He, oh, yeah, I, I really like how 66 is different in Australia, you know, in <laughs> Europe you don't, um, you know, it's not, not as much as Prolander as this, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, we all have our own little thing. All right, Sean's going to go for the oh, big play. Oh, do you not know that Sigafu was our head admin? Oh, yeah, that explains so much. Yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're, there's actually a quota of engineer play per match, so um, it, it's really nice of Hertz to be doing his service to the community and to making sure that the, the game grows by playing engineer. Good on him. Maybe Paulson's, Paulson's, like Paulson's having a melee fight. <laughs> it's 3v1. He's not going to... Oh, Vana sucks. Vana ruins it. Um, yeah, wow. All right, All right 50 seconds fine, left. It's fine. Hurts is behind on engineer. Oh, yeah. He's got... The, oh, he's been spotted. <laughs> he's <insane. laughs> Oh. It's fine. He's still, he's still alive. alive. He's got this. He's got this. He's, he's a gamer god. He's covering his tracks with the mini sentry. He's he's an engineer god, man. Goodness it's me. a rolling was... retreat. He's gonna do the big flank onto the medic. He finds him. Ah, oh, barely not enough. That's mainly because I shoot his aimbotting and cheating. But otherwise, that would have worked out perfectly. And <laughs> Dave is gonna get taken down by a, a huge sticky snipe there from Redcoat. And uh, Sam's gonna get the, what could possibly be the final kill of this uh, grand final. It's been. Quite a quite a show. The uh, sword is gonna donate his uh, life to the cause. Elmo, that was basically as good as any spider he's made this map, to be honest. And that's gonna be it, four to zero uh, in this map to Jasmine T. Jasmine T winning the final three to zero overall. Uh, last map uh, getting a bit clowny at the end there, but otherwise we had a pretty close match overall. But a big congratulations to Jasmine T. They will take first. Xenophobia phobia will take second. Yeah, uh, you can. You left me to talk about the logs last time, Beto, so I'll let you do it this time. I'm going to try and organize some interviews. We've already got one in here. We'll we'll get to to him in the moment. So talk yeah. us through the logs, Beto. Sure. And uh, you mentioned it earlier, and it was pretty obvious just looking at it that Cookie had a monster game this time around. He had the top damage. He had, had over ten thousand damage. He had forty two kills and thirteen deaths. That's a KD of three point two and a KAD of four point two. So Cookie was the only one trying. Game from him. Only one trying. Sure. Whatever. Cookie's the only one with a med <laughs> team on his ass. You mean? All right. Uh, as you may have heard, we do have interviewees here from uh, the gracious second place winners. We have Team Captain Sean uh, from the winners, Jasmine T. We have got Elmo Paulson and Cookie. Uh, first of all, I want to open with a question to you, Paulson. What's worse, Elmo Spy or his soldier? I wasn't uh, trying. I everything well, he plays is equally worse. <laughs> what do you mean, cut? I would have won the game before any of that should happen. But Paul this says, no, PG. I want to do my shit play. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> wah, wah. Can and I, I run off the point and die? Please? Can Did I you talk, talk about, about the play? You, we saw you having your so existential the play, crisis like, there. We, 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 we came up with this idea to fucking do this play, um, like, at 4-0, like it was going to be the winning play, and then we we forgot to factor in the 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 fact that the enemy team would probably play playing increasingly aggressive. Yeah, weird, they the want to win, the, right? The How closer got they? to the end, we didn't think that we we just we were expecting them to hold last, so we never actually got to try it. So that's why you saw my fail attempt <laughs> because I was just trying to charge past or something because we never got a chance to do it properly. All right, Cookie, you're the new you're the new recruit on Jasmine T. Is this basically sum up what your season's been like? These two yelling at each other? Uh, Not yep. enough gay innuendos yet, to be honest, to be accurate. 
I want to confirm this is TF Live After Hours, so you guys can go ham. When has it ever stopped me, honestly? Yeah, that's true. The moment you're here. Um, yeah, nah, whatever. Uh, all right. Uh, Got my new Sean. load up for nothing. Yellow. Hey, Sean. Hello. Uh, you guys, <laughs> um, Good. you guys played really, really well on Gullywash, especially. You were in it for the first two maps. Badlands, it all sort of fell apart. Uh, first of all, talk us through Doge. What, what, and the red coat substitute. What happened there? I, I would love to know. I think Paulson has a lot of explaining to do. Oh, uh, is this yeah. Rust? Is yeah, that yeah. I hear that, I hear that hot Paulson, date last night. Yeah, they had a hot date. Paulson kept him up really late. I don't know what was going on. All I know is that Paulson can, and Doge were up until really early I can give you a really Twitch clip of what exactly I, I what was may going may on. Is this, where, is this where Scott is a twink? So does that, yeah. make, Doge, <laughs> does that make Doge the bear? Does that make yeah. Doge the bear? Sean, you haven't, you, haven't seen the new, you haven't seen the new Rust video from Hertz either. Well, I'll have to get. Yeah, that's what, that's to what get they that. went up to all night long, Sean. Oh, that's why hell. he's so, so tired. But, like, yeah. I mean, Doge didn't show up. We haven't heard from him. No one's heard from him. Redcoat's, like, a more than able replacement. It sucks that we didn't get to play the grand final with Doge. Like, obviously, our, prefer- our preference is to play with our core. But, you know, that's on Doge. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, Paulson. Yes. you have anything intelligent to say? No. I don't know. I'm, try- I'm trying possible. to think of some questions, but this is, this is exactly how I, I expected I- this interview to go. <laughs> I I no, no I I am legit upset that Doge didn't show up. I don't know. We both went to bed at the same time. I guess his alarm didn't work. Oh, uh, you're in like some West to be honest, Australian dimension, though. There is there is no way that Doge shouldn't be awake at 10 p.m. Like, oh well, what's it in Adelaide? Is that where it is? He is Adelaide. Like, he should be awake by now, but he's still flying on Steam. So, I don't know, man. Yeah, it was Gully was very fun though. Gully was an epic game. Um, very close. Right. Okay, so I actually want to hear about the strat, right? Because, you know, we obviously, like, so I assume the plan is to have you go in through the side door and just, like, weave your way onto the point. Is exactly. that correct? It's the whole, basically the whole just point, a play the whole we point. were copying. Yeah, we th- but, saw, but then saw what, what, uh, what else is there? Like, so what, what happens is it's even Ubers, and the plan was to basically have Geo go top left and trade Ubers and try to get on the demo as much as possible, distracting him, while simultaneously we have Cookie and Hertz rush the soldier top right to distract him, and Elmo's at main shooting stickies off the point during all this chaos. And while all that garbage is going on, I, with my meme loadout, would have tied turned my way to victory to the point for the lower right. It would have been the keyword. That was the plan, and I've seen it work before. But we were idiots and didn't didn't do it early enough. <laughs> All right, I do have a question though for the Jasmine Gang again. Geo spied at the first mid. Was that planned, or did he not realise that the game had started? That no, was... he just felt like it. <laughs> no, he, he, was... he got he got the frag. So like, well done. He was spy pre-game, like just before he switched to soldier, and we were just like, wait, Geo, we're gonna spy to mid. See what happens. If we did it, that was it. It was just on the spot. Stolen from tea time. Oh, yeah. Uh, fair enough, Peter. Any more questions? Yeah, I kind of want to hear what you have to say about uh, the map pool because we don't have LogGM in, in Europe. Is that a good map? Should, should we think about that? It's a pretty damn split amongst this community. I think it's like half the community loves it, half the community hates it. I think today's, today's game it. felt pretty fun. Like I actually didn't hate it today. And on that basis, I think like it's worth keeping in the pool to see how it goes. Like I don't think people have fully worked it out, so you might as well keep it in. Yeah. Right, I don't know. We, this game is really old at this point. And I don't know. I, I come from the perspective that any new maps, as long as it's just like not fundamentally flawed in some way, like like they're good. A new map's good. It's fun to play something different. Uh, that's that's fair enough. Um, do you think the gully? Uh, sorry, the granary out is the the right play for it though. No, I think I, I have the right play for it. Yeah, Sean, we talked Which about is, this on the yeah, other on, on the shall not be named our casting our service. It's, but... it's been discussed publicly where instead of playing <laughs> every map twice, we play some maps only once. So you play maybe like reckoner granary metal log jam once each instead of just cutting granary. Um, the, you'd have a lot of map pool. Yeah, like just have like more maps in the pool. You don't have to play them all twice. I don't know why we have such a rigid structure with that. So, and Sean, as Sean pointed out, it it, allow, it um opens up more strategy as well in the finals when you get to pick like maps. 
that weren't scrimmed, etc. Yeah, because yeah, that's that's something that we touched on in the brew game going through this is like you you guys do your bands and then it becomes a, a point of just when you're playing each map that's left. It's not what you're playing; it's just when you're going to be playing it. So yeah, yeah it would be exactly. Mm. All right, Elmo. I do want to know like what was going on with your spy plays, dude. They were not you, on. Did you can't watch that? <laughs> like the, no, no, the all three one, maps. All the three maps, dude. One, fair enough. The second one. Oh wait, how many times did I fucking die? You went spy like. Yeah, I stabbed the sniper on like one map on purpose. Yeah, wasn't that? Sad? Yeah, I, I figure you yeah. tunnel Sam there. Well, it's because Sean ran away, and it's like might as well kill Sam. He'll be mad. <laughs> Tilted rest of the game. Strategy, <laughs> the boy. notorious tilt of Sam. <laughs> yeah, of course. And like he'll just quit straight away, go back to Kovacs, and then what did I do on Gully? I don't even remember. I don't did remember I play either. Spy? I didn't think I played Spast. I was spy for seven minutes during the pause. That's why I did nothing. <laughs> it wasn't just me like hiding in the corner, cloak and dagger or something. That's what Paulson does on spy. What? <laughs> I own on spy. I don't know. Have you seen Paulson's pick glasses? I actually don't understand the Dude, last I just stab, got though. Lucky, okay? I was literally right <laughs> behind him. I stabbed and then he just like, I don't know, doesn't die. Fair enough. But West Australian internet's to blame, just lagging. Yep. Sean, back me up here. Yeah, West Australian internet is AIDS. Is that Thank what you. we're going with? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good. I'll get, I'll get Cookie involved because he's, he's sort of sitting there. Is Badlands your home, Mac Cookie? You seem to be having a good time there. Uh, usually not really, but yeah. It's it whichever map Dave will chaos. heal him the most. I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Dave doesn't about Dave has his medigun up Cookie's butthole the most. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, fair enough. How how um how was the roster thing this season? Because I know you guys have had a couple of medics going through the season. Was uh was Dave all good coming into this? Is was he at the the top of his game as the as much as Dave can be? Honestly, I think Dave's playing the best he's ever played before, which is crazy to me since he like never plays the game anymore. Like. I, I don't find him doing stupid stuff anymore, like he might have done in the past. Like, I, 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 I'm, he knows he knows we all think he does stupid stuff, but he, he played like I thought really well this season. All right, fair call. Uh, all right, just one last question then. Unless Peter, do you have anything else? No, no, I'm good. All right, I was going to ask uh, if you guys had uh, any sort of iota what was going to be happening with next season. Is Jasmine going to continue its reign of dominance, or what's the play? Geo. And I are not playing. I don't know about Dave. Paulson's playing. He just says that. Dave's not going to play. Da- Dave says he might be going to play gonna demo play. in an inter team. That's what he said. <laughs> so what is it? wasn't with you, like Jasmine Medics and going to play demo in inter. It's a recurring thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, other than that, I think uh, there might be some interesting teams on the horizon with Elmo and Cookie and Hertz. Very nice. Wait, can we just congratulate Hertz on winning? I don't know if that's already happened yeah. or not. But like, oh, seriously, I, I was hoping we just forget it happened. <laughs> can you just, just give pretend Hertz it didn't. a second medal, second place medal anyway? You get, it's oh, like a perseverance award, dude. Perseverance. <laughs> perseverance award. Uh, he he, lock, he lock really has well. stuck through it through thick and lock. thin. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I don't think we have much and more. Ryan, of... big clap for Ryan for winning Prem. <laughs> Oh, yeah, made a boys. Yep, Do congrats. you guys ever feel guilty about these players you're giving you're giving medals to? Luck played half we, the maps though. We yeah, feel no, guilty about fair. hurts, but no we one need else. it. <laughs> Gooseman was the water boy. Grants was the, <laughs> the original water boy. We we got a new one this season. We need one. That's and fair. Lau as well, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How many times played the, the grand Lau's final? probably won heaps. Yeah. All right. We don't have anything more of consequence to say, so I'm going to go down the list. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll probably we'll do shout outs. I will start with you, Elmo. Any shout outs to give? Uh shout outs to the uh other team, good games and shit. Uh shout out to Heaves because he's whining on Steam about it. Uh, shout out to Paulson and our Doge last night. <laughs> Request uh, requesting a uh Paulson bark before this the uh, stream oh, ends. No. Thanks. Well the fans want it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next on the list of shout-outs. Oh, would you look at that? It's Paulson. Have you got any <laughs> sh- bark-outs to give? Uh, yeah, definitely a shout-out to Doge as well for a hot date and rust. <laughs> I'm sorry that I tied him out so much last night that he couldn't show up. 
There, there's um, going to be so many one second videos that we can make of this. <laughs> Bears need to hibernate, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, shout out to the casters, shout out to uh, Zeno for it was an awesome game to begin with until it devolved into utter AIDS at the end, which was probably the funnest part. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder whose fault that was. <laughs> um, and yeah, okay, shout out to all the people in stream spamming Oh My Dogs. Woof! <laughs> that was pathetic. Give us a better one. <laughs> I'm not accepting No! That's all you get. Not acceptable. Uh, all right, Sean. Yeah, shout outs to Jasmine for the the close two maps. Um, shout out to the casters and Oz Fortress, and shout out to Zeno Discord. Except Doge. <laughs> yeah, he's in the naughty corner. All right, Cookie. Shout outs. Shout out to Zeno for the good game and all the boys. You guys know who you are. Thanks, Cookie. Uh, yeah, thanks, mate. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, uh, Beta, my co-caster for tonight. Up to you. Yeah, so I guess we should plug that the that might be in the uh, award show where uh, different awards are given out. I don't know which ones, but I assume it's the the regular things. Why um, am I banned? We don't Sorry. quite know when it is. Sorry, but <laughs> it might be some sort of roundtable thing. We don't quite know yet, but definitely check check around to make sure you know when that happens, and then. You'll know more when we know more. And then big shout out to V2 for setting up everything and then doing production as well. You know, he just came home uh, from Denmark. So just uh, welcome home, buddy, I guess. And then uh, thank you, y'all, for, for casting with me. It was a true pleasure. Uh, thank you. It was a pleasure. So hearts for hearts for Weird uh, in chat because he is the production god. Um, yeah, uh, I'd just like to shout out the facts that we, I believe it's on this stream, the Asia Fort Div 1 Grand Final is this weekend, so stay tuned for that. Uh, shout out both teams for a good game until it wasn't a good game, then it was a fun game. So thank you guys for that. Uh, shout out to Warnable, and that's it. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. This was the Oz Fortress Season 23 Premier Division Grand Final between Zeno and Jasmine T. Jasmine T won it eventually. I can breathe again, and thank you for coming. Later. <laughs>